Okay, hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to the start of a new live stream series on the channel and a brand new mod on the channel. Today, we are going to be playing some Hearts of Iron 4, The Moe Order, last episodes of anime. And uh, here we are in the main menu. Uh, so, sorry that there was a tiny delay on the start, I think it was a couple minutes off. I was whipping up a quick breakfast, which is a really interesting thing. It's like this version of chicharron, but it's with oats. Found it from a cookbook. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to be munching a little bit here at the start. But I hope that everybody got a chance to check out the um, the Hearts of Iron 4 Moe Order um, Russian Unification video. If not, it's up. It's like, you know, it's not going anywhere. You guys can check it out afterwards. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be starting to play as the... West Russian Revolutionary Front and Crane 115 is already asking the $5 million question. What path am I going to take? Well. Oh, this food's good. Hold on. Building suspense. Hmm. So, the way it works is um, you basically have two paths that you could take as the West Russian Revolutionary Front. You could either go with your leader um, uh, as a Georgi Zukov, or you can go with Mikhail Tukhachevsky. Now, I really, really thought long and hard about how I wanted to do this, and uh, I made my decision, which I'll discuss when we get there. Uh, but I think the decision I've made is going to have been the right one. All right. By the way, if anyone wants this recipe for the version of chicharron I made, I'll be happy to tell you. So, I think uh, we we're also I was also kind of just kind of riffing here, letting some people get into the stream. It looks like people are are starting to arrive. Let's get going. By the way, I wonder what's up with this woman here in the crowd. She looks like she's wearing some kind of, I don't know, is that a hoodie? Anyway, let's get going. So uh, I am going to read the starting scenario thing because I think the uh, West Russian Revolutionary Front is arguably like, you know, one of the most lore heavy of the, uh, of the Russias. Obviously it's very critically important uh, for, for how the world works. So. As the Soviet Union burned, its loyal Red Army refused to yield to the German invaders. In the dark days after the Union's collapse, Marshal Clement Voroshilov rallied the surviving troops. Hold on a second, I gotta do something in the other monitor here real quick. Give me a second. Just a moment. Okay. I'm sure you guys are just enjoying Eric on a loop anyway. Hmm. Okay, so. Uh, Marshal Clement Voroshilov rallied the surviving troops and founded the West Russian Revolutionary Front to carry on the struggle against fascism. Striking back at the occupiers, the front was at the cusp of victory when they were driven back at the last minute, nearly shattering it permanently. Yet the front lives on. From the city of Arkhangskill, its grizzled veterans stand at the ready. Veterans at the ready! Uh, preparing for the time when they drive the fascists from the motherland and rebuild the Soviet Union anew. However, Voroshilov is not a young man, and his final hour draws close every day. It is a moment his generals are eagerly waiting for. Each of them planning to seize his torch for, himself, for themselves, that they be the one, that's probably supposed to say, that they shall be the one who shall lead the front to victory. And here we go. Hmm. Okay. Um... So, the great patriotic war against the fascist, fascist invader cost the people everything. This is referring to the, uh, the original invasion of Nazi Germany into the Soviet Union. 
and then some. The Nazis employed unim unimaginable cruelty in a crusade against Soviet civilization itself, to the extent where no single man or woman couldn't name someone close to them who had been cruelly torn from them by the hands of the Hitlerites. Oh, I just got a couple more spoonfuls of this food. Let me eat it real quick. Let's get started. <clears throat> in the muddled anarchy, I'm gonna probably get another bowl. Actually, that stuff was good. Uh, in the muddled anarchy after the total collapse of central government authority, the remnants of the Red Army in the West reorganized in the city of Kuybyshev under the leadership of Grand Marshal Clement Yefremovich Voroshilov. Across the former territory of the Soviet Union, loyal Red Army units flocked to his banner, including the Sixth and Ninth Armies under Marshals Mikhail Nikolaevich Tukhachevsky. Georgi Konstanovich Zukov, respectively. So, real quick, Tukhachevsky is still alive because in this world, uh, Stalin never uh, took charge of the Soviet Union and instead was Bukharin. So, the great purge that Tukhachevsky died in doesn't happen. So, that's why he's still alive. Uh, with these powerful mechanized forces and an alliance with prominent political figures such as Mikhail Andreevich Suslov, the newly formed West Russian Revolutionary Front was able to exert authority over all the shattered remnants of the Union which remained west of the Urals. In the late 50s, so this is after World War II, now, now we're going into the 50s, with the Reich paralyzed by the deadliest economic crash in history and the Red Army only becoming more eager to avenge their defeat, Grand Marshal Voroshilov, I probably should talk about who this guy is real quick. So, so let's scroll back up. There's just so much background to cover. Uh, so, Voroshilov, the one we're seeing here, was in real life one of the first five marshals of the Soviet Union, along with uh, Tukhachevsky, incidentally. Uh, and he was the the head. He was the head of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet in real life. From 1953 to 1960, so about the time that we're in right now, anyway. Um, you know, took part in the Russian Revolution. He was, uh, gosh, how old was he at the time? He was kind of in his, I think he was in his 40s by the time that the Russian Revolution happened. Like, the, you know, the, the two in the in 1917. So, he was, um, he was of the older generation. He wasn't as young as the people like uh, Tukhachevsky and Zhukov were. Um... He also uh, took part in the purges in uh, in the 30s. Uh, you see, that's the trick. That's how you avoid the purges. You, you take part in them yourself, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, after the Soviet Union invaded Finland, uh, things went really bad. Uh, he, was, uh, he was blamed for it, but he was not killed. He was just put on the State Defense Committee instead of being the defensive uh, commissar. And uh, then he was put back in charge in uh, 1941 when Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. And he was supposed to stop them from surrounding Leningrad. He failed, of course, and so that turns into the uh, the bloodiest siege in human history. Um, so then he is again relieved of command. Uh, then later on, he's the one who takes part in the uh, invasion of Hungary to establish a pro-Soviet regime. And uh, after Stalin died is when he was made chairman of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet. Uh, then Khrushchev came along, and Khrushchev removes him from power. And uh, doesn't kill him, but he basically does nothing with his life, for, um, at least that I remember for the last, like, yeah, nine years of his life. He just doesn't have any power. Um, uh, funnily enough, uh, when he was removed from office by uh, Khrushchev, the guy who replaced him, was Brezhnev, who would later go on to replace Khrushchev. And so the Soviet circle of life continues. Anyway, so that's what happened in real life. Let's go back to here. Uh, so in the late 50s, with the economic crisis, Grand Marshal Voroshilov decided that the time had come to launch Operation Suvorov. Is anybody in the chat? The chat seems to have frozen. And there's a fair amount of you in here.
Uh, so, I'll just keep going. Uh, it looks The stream looks like it's working to me. Um, okay, so, where was I? The liberation of all Soviet lands currently occupied by Operation Suvorov. The liberation of... Yeah, yeah. Despite Lazar Kadaganovich refusing to commit the forces of the West Serbian People's Republic to the operation, that's the guy who's in charge over here in Tuyamin, this guy, this bear waifu here, just so adorable and precious! Uh, and also, I kind of think this is a cool looking flag, the blue Soviet one. Unfortunately, it changes, but I like that shade of blue. Uh, refusing to commit the forces of the West Siberian People's Republic to the operation, the Red Army's advance was swift and brutal. Uh, Voroshilovgrad was liberated on day 28 of the operation, prompting an attempted coup of, by the SS under Heinrich Himmler over here. There's Himmler. Spurred by the infighting with the enemy's ranks, Red Army troops reached the outskirts of Leningrad and Moscow by day 40. Riding high on this wave of success, few noticed the cracks that had formed within the front's political structure over the years. The exact cause of the disintegration of the front during the West Russian War remains unknown, with theories raise, ranging from an attempted seizure of power by Suslov, Suslov's down in Komi now, to the breakdown of the critically overextended command structure. Facing threats to the security of the military leadership in the face of a renewed German offensive employed by the collaborationist forces of the uh, Russian Liberation Army and Vladimir Romanov, the government was relocated to the city of Skytavar, which is here. This is where Komi is. Following the political turmoil and the string of defeats at the hand of the enemy, the Republic of Komi seceded from the front and subsequent strings of defections and secessions uh, marked the end of the West Russian War and the death of the West Russian Revolutionary Front. So did everybody understand that? It's really important lore. If you need me to um, elaborate, please say. So that was the death of it. Or so the Germans thought the Front lives on, clinging to life among the per amongst the permafrost tundra around the embattled city of Arkhangskull. Uh with its generals bitterly divided after the catastrophic failure of Operation Suvorov. Um, to the south sit the military districts of Paletsky and Okhuta, ostensibly loyal vassals trusted with the management of the front's anti-aircraft defenses against the German terror bombings and upkeep of the oil fields, respectively. Yeah, because I think there's a little... Yeah, see, the oil's here. Uh, however, these domains serve a very different purpose to keep Tukhachevsky and, Zuyko and Zukov and all the factional politics that follow them far, far away from the leadership in Arkhangsko. Marshals Mikhail Nikolaevsky Tukhachevsky, who is played, I probably should actually now, um, you know, formally uh, introduce who our characters are. So, headphone users, get ready for it. <laughs> all right. Let's do the formal introduction. <clears throat> Playing the part of Mikhail Nikolaevich Tukhachevsky is the one, the only, Pravda's favorite lowly, the drifting snow, Katyusha! And... In this corner, reigning over the oil fields of Ukta, playing the part of Georgi Konstanovich Zukov, the one, the only, the Blizzard Nona! Those are our characters for today. Love these focuses, by the way, with the No National Focus set. <laughs> um, anyway, both, of course, from Pravda Academy, Pravda Academy from the Girls und Panzer anime, and for those of you who follow other things on my channel, are, in fact, the Russians in Exiles who fought for the Patagonian Workers' Front and liberated Argentina, as well as, um, you know, moved over to the Commune of France, 
where we are on the journey to liberate their rests, uh, uh, to, to liberate Russia and turn it into a red Russia uh, as they are in exile. So we are going to, uh, you know, that's that's then, this is now, this is alternate timelines, but surely the Prof the girls will always be friends. Like, look at this, you know, Tukhachevsky is carrying, excuse me, Zukov is carrying uh, uh, Tukhachevsky on her shoulders. It's great, they're gonna be friends forever. Um, now, they are considered to be the two potential successors in the event of Voroshilov's untimely death. Tukhachevsky is a talented, if somewhat eccentric officer. I'm not going to talk about what they did in real life too much, by the way. Go check out episode one of my Patagonia campaign for that. Tukhachevsky is a talented, if somewhat eccentric officer who believes in the role of the Red Army as the primary driver of political change. A former noble who turned against the conformity of his class to join the Bolsheviks in the Civil War, Tukhachevsky has gained support from a number of elements within the front who wish to avoid the mistakes made by Bukharin uh, and return the USSR to its former military glories and beyond, with every cog inside its machine turning towards one singular goal, every soldier marching towards final victory. Zukov is a talented, popular commander who received fame and admiration amongst his men from the Civil War to Operation Suvorov, leading the liberation of Voroshilovgrad together with Marshal Momiasholi. While Zukov is fiercely loyal to the communist cause, his clique has attracted the attention of some reform-minded figures such as Alexander Yakovlev and Nikolai Rezovkov, along with many of the hardliners unaffiliated with Tukhachevsky's faction, such as Sergei Akromeyev. Um, in 1962, the front's situation is a precarious one. Beyond the territories controlled by Archangel Skolite statelets, ruled by illegitimate secessionists, by collaborators, by Tsarists, and ugh, other contenders. <laughs> Only time will tell if the front will regain its position as the defender of Western Russia and potentially reunite the motherland to avenge those who fell and deliver justice upon Germany. The features manage the squabbling cliques of generals to decide the future of the front, put an end to warlordism and anarchy, uniting Russia under the Soviet flag once more, and prepare for the continuation of the great patriotic war against Germany. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much it. Let's go. Um, the Roshilov age nicely. Oh yeah, she must use lotion. Um. She looked, and she shaved, she must have shaved the mustache, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. So I'm not going to read all of this. The first paragraph basically just goes over it again. Um, but even in defeat, the resolve of the marshal remains unbreakable, and he never lost his hope that he will eventually see the red banner over the Kremlin once again. The old Klim remains a popular figure among the people of Arkhangskal, but the long years of never-ending struggle and long melancholy for his lost motherland have not spared his health. His authority still holds the remnants of the Soviet country together, but as his subordinate generals obtain more and more power within their domain and seek to change the front in their own image, fiercely competing with each other for the influence over the country, who can say what future what the future unfolds for the West Russian front after Voroshilov dies? So start thinking about which path we want to take, people. All right. I've already made my decision what we're going to do in regards to paths. Uh, we're going to talk about it when the time comes. All right. What's the plan here? Uh, I guess we should probably start, you know, we are the Red Army. What, what have we got here? We've got the Gardiska, Gardiskaya Strelkovaya Divizna, which is uh, elite infantry mixed with uh, artillery. Got some support artillery engineer companies there. Did you see the Zukov has big booba comments? Yes, yes, I did see it. That was uh, being brought up quite a bit in the um, in the uh, the Russian unification one for certain characters. It would just go, you know, some would go, oh, that's so cool, that's what that character is. Oh yeah, this one. And then uh, and then there would be some characters who they'd pop up during the stream, and you'd just see the and the live chat just goes booba 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 booba. <laughs> um. 
All right, so yeah, we, yeah, we're supposed to be looking at our what we got here. By the way, do you see the details? They've made the general icons moe. Fantastic stuff. Okay, we have one motorized division. Is that seriously it? Unacceptable. Yeah, the elite infantry's got cat ears. I'm glad somebody noticed it. Yeah, there's a lot of detail here. This, this, this these are these are good people, uh, good hardworking people. Look at the backgrounds here. You know, they put in that work. Um, so I think what we want to do here, we've got our main battle tanks here we could potentially make. We've got five military factories. I think since we are using the girls of Pravda Academy, we should try to make some battle tanks. Having said that though, we need to focus on other things as well. So we want infantry equipment, we've got the support equipment, we're going to need motorized, and uh, we're going to need artillery at some point, but we're not actually going to be building it right now because we're doing main battle tanks instead. Um, okay. Roomba. <laughs> okay, so... Industry. Can't go wrong there, right? I think the repair... Yeah, repair is gonna be good. Oh, God damn, 232 days. Repair is gonna be good as we take over more and more of uh, Russia and stuff. Oh yeah, let's look at our national spirits. You always want to do that early. Uh, Luftwaffe terror bombings. With depressing regularity, Luftwaffe bombers from the airfields fly over the warlord states to destroy it. So everybody in the West has to deal with this. This is a lot of bad industry stuff. We have veterans of the long war, though, which is very interesting. For decades, the front has fought for the old Union against the German and the Russian alike. 30 years of constant warfare, attrition, and training have steeled the front soldiers, backing them by experience and grim determination. They are the Soviet Union's finest soldiers. Forged in the furnaces of war, of iron will and steely muscle. In their hands are placed the guns of the motherland, and beside them rolls the best armor available. They cannot, will not surrender, for there is always the long war against the Hitlerites to fight. And if victory cannot be achieved, what is left for Russia? We've also got some agricultural uh, insecurity because, you know, we're trying to farm in Tundra! Um, greater and greater. In order to secure food for the front, greater and greater sacrifices alongside more connections with reliable warlords must be made. I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to get some more food. See you in a sec. So anyway, what I'm making here is a really interesting um, variation on chicharron. This is chicharron de avena, founded in his cookbook. It's actually a food benefits cookbook. Not that I've ever been on like food stamps. Sometimes when I was uh, yeah solving the food problem, I have brought the chicharron, comrades. Um, so this is like so anyway. I, I've never been on food stamps, even though there were times in my life I definitely qualified. Um, but I do have this uh, cookbook that's supposed to, like, give you recipes for how to eat cheap and healthy um, recipes. You know, so this one is from the uh, San Antonio Food Bank. I'm not sure how it ended up in El Paso, but I've got one. Yeah, so what you just do, it's, it's eating ASMR time. Now... The way that um, chicharron usually works, I probably should explain what that is for people who don't live in El Paso, but chicharron is basically fried like pork rinds, fried pork, not very healthy at all. Um, delicious, but not healthy. So chicharron de avena is a healthy way to have chicharron basically because it, it tastes like it. Mm. So, there's no meat in it. Not that I'm a vegetarian. What you do is you um, 
and I'm so sorry. You know, thank you for your patience, everybody. While I'm eating, it's just like I had, I didn't eat all day. You know, I was working on other things, so I'm just gonna scarf this down and then get playing. So I'm hoping that you find the recipe interesting. So what you do is you get a pan, put some oil in it, half of an onion, and uh, a clove of garlic. You know, you can you can adjust all these proportions. By the way, I'm just telling you how I do it. So. You got the oil, the onion, the garlic. Get that, you know, maybe sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. Put it on medium to medium low heat for a few minutes. Then you take a carrot. Uh, sometimes you use one carrot. I wanted a lot of carrots, so I put two. You chop up a couple carrots, throw them, throw them on the uh, into the pan too, so they can get heated up. Now I, I like I don't like my carrots to be like soft. So, so I put them in after the onion. Like, I guess you could put them in with the onion if you want them to be more tender. They'll have cooked longer. That's just how I do it. Now, then you're going to want to turn up the heat a little bit. And then this is the weird part for people. You then take a cup of oats. You know, like oatmeal oats. You take a cup of that and throw that in there. Then, you're going to also put in some tomatoes and onions that you've blended together so it's like a sauce you mix it all you mix that all up so it's coating the oats and then it's going to start cooking in there and uh then you just cook it until you feel that it's ready you could do it for like up to 10 minutes and then you also put cumin in there that's where you really get that that warmth flavor there some spiciness there and some salt i know it sounds very weird but i guarantee you it's delicious I thought it was extremely weird too. That's why I was so eager to, like, when I was looking at the cookbook, I saw this. I went, "What? The, I've never heard anything like this." So I need to try it, and it's pretty good. I had a bowl of it. I mean, another bowl too. And you know, it's pretty healthy because what's in it? A cup of oats, half an onion, two carrots, garlic, tomatoes, and there's like a tiny bit of oil you use at the beginning, but that's just so the onion doesn't burn. That's really it. It's so good. It's so filling and delicious. All right. Let's get playing, shall we? Thank you all for your patience. I don't think a single view, from what I was looking at on the stream, not a single viewer left for that. You guys are amazing, and I appreciate you. Okay. Let's get building, baby. Um, oh, my God. These Luftwaffe terror bombings. It's so bad. We also have a 50 to 80% poverty rate. We need to... Yeah, our industrial base is crap. We've got widespread cronyism in the army. We got a lot of bad things going on here. Oh, at least we got basic literacy. <coughs> Cooking live stream win. I don't know how that would work because you wouldn't be able to see me. But then again, I think... I've never watched them, but I think that some of the hollow live uh, women have done cooking streams and... I don't know, maybe I should go look those up. Like, how do you do a cooking stream when you don't show yourself? Maybe they just pointed a camera at the uh, the stove or something and made sure not to show their hands. I hate to ask, but who is your wife, Foo? <laughs> anyway. Uh, what we're going to do... Okay, enduring. It seems like yet another... Irrelevant and unknowing warlord state in Russia. Perhaps owning slightly more territory than one would expect. The dreams of liberation were crushed. We have been isolated in a corner, stuck in the frozen north, and based in Archangel. Now we must... Is this what it means when people say based in the chat? Like, oh, that's pretty based. So it's like you're based in Archangel? Anyway. We must seek to assess our situation, find every detail on our resources and capabilities, and how we can make the most out of it. All right. All right, let's get going here. Um, God, we got two factories available. Disgusting! Oh, can we just create the agency here? Nice. Does this not require factories anymore? Is that a new thing? Wow. That's a pretty big um, update. And of course, we have so many new portraits, so if anybody wants me to like go around and look at certain characters, please let me know. 
especially because I'm sure at the beginning, you know, there's not going to be a ton go. You know, like we we've all united Russia before. There's there's some parts where you're kind of just waiting a little bit, and that's fine. So anytime you guys want me to go around and look for certain characters, you, and we're not in the middle of something else, just let me know. Okay, Kremlit Voroshilov, our winter specialist, who is also charismatic. And down here, oh, who are we gonna get? Oh yeah, so yeah, somebody somebody earlier was uh, asking about Chuikov. So Chuikov is here, Panzer leader, improvisation expert, but not as important to the. Um, the plot this time, so to speak. So for those of you who have watched my Patagonian workers front in Moe Reich, as well as the Pravda France campaign, um, Clara is now General Alexander Altunin, who is an inflexible strategist and a winter specialist. Who's Glenn? Well, we can't, I'm not going to look up people who aren't on the map yet, okay? We're not going to start console commanding all that shit, but... Nixon? Here is a Nixon! The leader of the United States. I'll hold on to each of these for a few seconds. Okay, so that's Nixon. Who else was being requested? Here is Himmler. With glasses, of course. And the purple tie. Burgundy tie, you might say. No, burgundy's not purple. Burgundy's red, like a shade of red, like wine. This is just a event we all know um there is hitler as well and then uh somebody said they wanted to look at yazov but i don't think yazov is here yet um yeah it's still dmitry karbyshev and an assassin has struck at hitler damn it they missed all right uh the failures of barbarossa the Soviet Union had been born, and after a world war most terrible, we are what remains of a united Soviet Russia, ready to face the barrel of the Nazi rifle under the greater Marshal Clement Voroshilov. Okay, so we've got we've got some stuff here. The Revolution's Northern Star. Let's read this. Then we need to look into the rating. Rating's very important. All right. Um, through the Black Forties we carried on. The Germans and their arrogance thought the Soviet Union broken, consigned to the dustbin of history. Throughout the decade, we plotted and prepared. Throughout Russia and Central Asia, men and women alike united for a great attempt to push back the fascists. In the West Russian War, the complacent Germans suffered defeat after defeat as the armies of the workers marched west. But at the height of our success, the Red Army was betrayed by her own people. Reactionary dogs and czarist bootlickers helped the Germans turn back the tide and destroyed our overstretched front line. Deep behind our lines as well, revolt after revolt sprang up as demagogues preached the end of the Soviet Union. Now the nation forged in Lenin's revolutionary flame has been reduced to a few scraps of frozen land. Oh, thank you very much for the super chat. And wow, it actually instantly registered on the live stream for once. Um, when is Katyusha going to sing Katyusha while rolling on Moscow? So I can play the Inception sound? Well, some say that Katyusha is what plays when Tukhachevsky uh, unites Russia. I don't know. You'd have to check the Russian unification in the, the new uh, the super events video for the Moe Order to verify that or not. But, thank you very, very much for the super chat. Much appreciated. Okay. Um, basically, the revolution endures. We are the guiding star in the northern sky. And we just got some political power as well. Oh, yeah, baby. So, industrial investments first, I think, yes. Um, now, in terms of raiding, we can scavenge for loot real quick. Um, but no, let's not. We're about to be able to, uh, to do raids. So we can only do raids against Vorkuta and Onega. Uh, we're going to, um, probably do Vorkuta. The great gulag in the north. Alright. It did not play Katyusha? 
Na, 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 na. Let's go ahead and actually scavenge for some loot first. Uh, so we could just buy something with it. Uh, maybe research facilities. I don't know. But we got to get doing all this stuff. Cool, so our agency's done. Ah, see, these cost factory. Okay. Whatever. Yes. Step one! Alright, time to prepare the raid. Hitler has named Heydrich his successor. Interesting. Some hail this as an end to hostilities between Germany and the SS, only few are so forgiving. With most viewing, Heydrich has little more than a puppy of Burgundy as riots erupt across Germany in response. Wow, there's rioting? <laughs> Goodness. Goodness gracious. Alright, so we're just kind of... So so what else did people want to see in terms of portraits? Uh, I saw somebody said the Italy leader. So over here. Here, yeah. Who else did you guys think it was going to be? <laughs> Alright. Who else did people bring up? Uh, we did Hitler, we did Himmler... Somebody said Nixon, but we've already done Nixon. Um, let's see who else. Who else could be interesting? I think somebody mentioned France. There's Charles de Gaulle there. A mysterious encounter. Uh, Vasily was at his guard post. He gazed into the wilderness that separated us from the control of the Vorkuta Gulag. Hmm. He could make out something in the distance. They were well dressed for the weather, heavy jacket, gloves, and other winter gear. Their face was covered by a balaclava and a type of helmet he couldn't recognize. He had a model from Zaltust. The mysterious man spoke then in broken, halting Russian. I come to warn. Bandits come from east. Mini bandits plan attack tonight. Uh, alert men, mini bandits. When the garrison sent uh, uh, reinforcements the next day, what they found shocked them. Vasily sat, smoking on a stump outside. Bodies were piled high in the field and around the building. The stranger was nowhere to be found. Exceptional work, comrade Vasily. So he just killed all the bandits by himself. We gotta see Japan. Yeah, what does Moe Japan look like? There we go. And oh, yes. Ian asked the question. Look at this. Everybody always wants to know where Tanya is. I actually know somebody named Tanya in real life. She does not watch anime. I do wonder, though, what she would say if I explained this to her. <laughs> oh. I'll need to remember to make it up. Uh, so, does the Philippines have one? Yes, they do. Oh, they have cute glasses. It's got the double, the double brace in the middle. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, you want to see Sablin? Oh, by the way, oh, as always, make your bets. Is Sablin or Yagoda going to win here? The Ghost of Bukharin. That is canon, actually. Uh, but anyway. Uh, across the lines. This is a letter from Tukachevsky. Dmitri, it's been some time since we've talked. I thought it would be worthwhile to catch up. It gave me much joy to discover you were still alive and well, even with all the chaos happening beyond the Euros. I'm becoming Italian, but da. Uh, um, I was, <laughs> I was not. 
I'm not certain what is happening over there, but my admittedly scattered sources do not paint an optimistic picture. I sincerely hope you're keeping safe. Whatever the case, I thought I'd enlighten you as to what I've been up to for the past few years. No doubt you've already heard about Operation Suvorov and the massive goddamn disaster that it was. It was not from lack of trying, we had those fascist pigs on the ropes. And if I'd had my way, I'd be writing this letter from Moscow rather than some pissant village. These fucking careerists would rather look to their own interests than fight for a cause greater than themselves. I urge Marshal Voroshilov every week that he needs to take a harder stance against our enemies, but he continues to give me the same tired excuses. We're not ready. We must look to our people first. It's driving me insane. Sometimes I feel he'd rather take advice from Zukov than I. He's a good man, sure, but does he really have the stomach for what must be done in the name of reunification? Perhaps I've vented about my problems far too much. I apologize, my friend, but I've been rather frustrated as of late. Please, don't be afraid to tell me of your own exploits, as I'm sure your troubles have much in common. Regards, Mikhail Nikolaevichev Tukhachevsky, a.k.a. The Drifting Snowcat Stressful days. Okay. So what was another one somebody wanted me to look at? Uh, we said Sablin. Uh, there's Magadan over here under Mikhail Metkovsky. We'll see what happens there. Um, time for the fa to discuss the failures of Suvrov. All right. A toast. The captain was unusually quiet and occasionally stern. A uh, few doses of vodka in his belly. The captain was a magnificent storyteller. You young men, he said, standing up in his chair so they could all see him bottle in hand. You don't remember what things were like before. Most of you were babies. Some not even born. Yeah. But I was there. I was only just out of skill. And I was, uh, I'm secretly a Scottish immigrant, no older than some of you. Because uh, uh, when I was sent to the front line, we're going Scottish, to the front lines of the Great Patriotic War, I was there at Kiev, at Kursk, at Voroshilovgrad, and then at Moscow. Defeat after defeat after defeat. You young men do not know how bitter it tastes. He grew quiet then, as did the room. He looked around at the faces of his subordinates, a hint of sadness across his face, and then took a long swig of vodka. The Germans! They had tanks and planes and self-propelled artillery and rocket launchers and all kinds of our shit. And what did we have? Half of our men didn't even have a rifle. Yet we put up a good fight. Many fine young men just like you died in those days. Died fighting for ever. <laughs> Of, of Russian soil we lost those Nazi dogs and it is because of them that we're here today still alive still fighting he lifted up his bottle and made a toast to the brave boys of the Red Army he roared putting the bottle to his lips and guzzling down vodka the soldiers thundered back happy to be warm and drunk and definitely Russian not Scottish to the brave boys of the Red Army Okay, we can now initiate the raid, I'm thinking. Hey, oi, oi! Aren't we red on me? Red! Hold on a sec. I didn't assign a commander. Yes, we'll get Clara. Uh. Here we go, initiate the raid! Go, 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 go! What is this? The musician and the marshal. So, you guys are probably wondering who is that Dimitri that was being uh, called. Well, it is none uh, who's being written a letter to. It was none other than Dimitri Dimitrievich Shostakovich, the humanist leader of Tomsk. Mikhail, it's, go it's good to hear from you. I admit I have not been paying much attention to whatever is happening beyond the Urals, and I'm glad you were able to shed some light on that. I am, as you've probably guessed, alive and well. 
Regrettably, I have not had much opportunity to accomplish much in the way of musical pursuits as of late, as my obligations to the Central Siberian Republic have stolen my undivided attention. I realize I've mentioned in the past that I had no love for politics, but strange circumstances such as these demand strange answers. If I can make a positive impact in this broken country, I will spare no effort. What you have told me concerns me deeply, however. I sense a great deal of pent-up rage within your words, and that your frustrations seem to be getting the better of you. As your friend, I would sincerely uh, advise caution. Yes, this friendship transcends timelines. Um, Ventic is healthy, so I will not discourage you on that front. However, please ensure that you do not lose yourself to your frustrations. A man in your position would do well to keep a cool head, for it would be easy to commit evil deeds on the field of battle in a belt of wild rage. Take care. Dmitri Dmitrievich Shostakovich. A troubled soul. <laughs> so is that fun or what? <laughs> Alright. Let's keep working here. Uh, we're gonna... Schools? Yeah, let's do the schools. Tribute has been paid. Miraculously, Vorkuta has caved in and paid us tribute, handing over our desired loot from their state. Bloodshed has been avoided and our men live to fight another day. It is unlikely that Vorkuta is to surrender to us so easily again. Ha! Suck it, boys. By the way, did you see how the manpower has changed? There's a lot going on in this mod, let me tell you. Alright, let's focus on research, right? Yeah, we're not going to ever be giving up stability. Let's get rid of that. We're at negative 15 stability, by the way, if y'all didn't notice. Um, securing control could be good. We're not going to do political campaigning. There's a few of these that I just never do. Uh, for right now, we're not going to train the troops. Well, I don't know. We'll think about it, but probably not. External Vizmits. Okay. All right, let us... Uh, maybe not focus on research. Let's secure control. Can't go too wrong there, right? Now... Uh, we need to think about making more divisions. Oh, there we go. There goes our whole army. <laughs> Damn it all. Not exactly a lot of manpower up here in the frozen north. So I think what we're going to have to do here is... Uh, Onega could be a problem. It really could be. Um... Uh, so he says they want to, uh, they make Alexa into, uh, Alexi into Elsa. So let's, uh, I think the first thing we might want to do here is let's just build some Intel network down in Comey, see what these secessionists are up to. Hey guys, Comey and Comey, Comeyception. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh God, that bowl was filling. I think I'm set till dinner. Uh, all right. So, any other any other people we want to look at uh, around here? Any other particular leaders or something? Could be Russia. Could be elsewhere. You know, new portraits and things like that. Like, yeah. Somebody said France earlier. So this is the French state as compared to you know, De Gaulle down here. Different leaders, obviously. Okay. Finland? Who is the leader of the Republic of Finland? Finland. There she is. A uh, very um, <clears throat> tactical use of the uh, straps there, Oesh. Look at Magnitogorsk in the southern Urals. Uh, that is here, right? Here we go. Magnitogorsk. Under Tromfin Lysenko. Golden child of socialist science. Uh, alright. Pertinent matters time! Although all men, women, and children understand the suffering we have gone through and the necessity to unite once again, the Nazis are not the only obstacle in, a way, in the way. Uh, we've got factions. The Marshal of Victory, Georgi Zukov, continues to lead a liberalizing faction desiring devotion to the communist cause and reforming spikes of governmental inefficiency through promises of reform. Meanwhile, the Red Bonaparte, Mikhail Tukhachevsky, ardently rallies for the militarization of the front, calling to abandon Bukharin's failing ideas and use the Red Army as a force for socialist change. 
Nevertheless, the front continues to march on, I'm sure of the future in these dangerous times. <laughs> A Steins Gate reference in Magnificorsk. Hey there, Soul Sealis. Yeah, things are going good. Uh, of course, big day, big day. Um, journal page. They barely gave me a glance. Old Kimley marshalling the Red Army of the Kremlin. Ha, I'm already fucking 80. The most I can marshal at this point is dining napkins and shot glasses. Mm -hmm. So he's just basically drinking a lot. The Red Army, my w the old bastard has plenty of things to forget anyway. My wasting body. That's what a wasting body looks like. We should all be lo so lucky. Um. The the Red Army, that Horson Tukachevsky, Finland, Suvorov. Aye, Suvorov. I had another dream about it last night. It ended the same as it had the night before. Waves of good men slaughtered like wheat against scythe. Fields of burning tank hulks, spewing smoke and burning, screaming bodies, a whole generation of Russians lost in a madman's gambit. Sometimes they call out to me when I close my eyes. Sometimes I hear nothing. Which is better? I don't know. I stared at the mirror this morning while washing my face. My eyes saw Clement Voroshilov. Clement the Grand Marshal, the hero of Sarensian. Clement the Twice Failure. Of Finland and Suvrov and a hundred more battles than fucking Sarensin. Always Sarensin. My hands are stained with more blood than all my generals combined. And not even alcohol could wash it away. Alright. Uh, yeah, if you... So see, this is right. If y'all don't mind dropping a like on the video, that'd be nice. Um, you guys want to see the BRC? The People's Revolutionary Council is right over here under Vasilevsky. Um, okay. What's the game plan here? You know what, I hate to do it, but I think we're, we might have to spend some money on training the troops. Possibly. Possibly. Hmm. Let's close this, this. We're not going to do that for a while. Can I do Mo Sizzlack? <laughs> I might have to work on it a little bit. I wouldn't right now. <laughs> Okay, show Kemerov. Oh yeah, Kemerov is uh, hold on, where's where's Kemerov again? There's so many tags in Russia. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. How does Der Willinger look? Here's the brigade, Oscar Der Willinger. Oh, is that? Where is Hitler Chan? Where else would he be? He's in Germany. <laughs> uh, spending money. That's not very commie of you. Okay, I think we can now prepare for another raid, or can we not? Uh, we still have the successful raid that's been done recently. Uh, Kemerov's in Central Siberia. Right, 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 in this area here. Yep, there's Kemerov under Rurik II, setting up the King's Society. And are they going to go with Prince Yuri, played by Hollow Live's own Noel? And then over here we have Princess Lydia, played by the Grim Reaper's Apprentice. Calliope Mori! Unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is going to be for TNO2. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it is. Oh, yeah, show Hutig. Hutig. Let's see here. Oh, Hutig wishes he had hair like that. Beneath their notice. Something solemn. Let's see. If the projections are right, we have six months worth of food left. But the ammo is going to run out first. He, was a, he knew someone who was not well known in polite society. A guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who would be more than willing to reward him for this information. Who would be willing to take him in while he lynched these little bastards. Reskolov smiled and returned to cleaning the floor. Uh... Uh, being a grunt has its perks. Yeah, Hutig's got nice hair, actually. And then over here is Siegfried Muller of the Reichskommissarat Zentral Afrika. 
And uh, over here, we've got Wolfgang Scheck of the Reichskommissariat Southwest Africa. Did you say Mommy Huttig? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Okay, what can we do this dog on raid already? Leader of Omsk. Well, the gas hasn't hit yet. Show England? Sure. Have I shown Nixon already? I've shown Nixon like three times. All right, here is Alec Douglas Holm, in charge of the Kingdom of England. Did I see the TNA Discord's April Fool's joke? Pure chaos. Oh, yeah, that, that Zoom meeting thing. That was hilarious. I don't know how much of it was improv or how much of it was um, uh, serious or not, not uh, scripted, I meant to say, but that Zoom meeting was just so good. I was laughing really hard uh, watching it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I've already made my decision, but we're going to have a straw poll, and then I'm going to say what my decision was. Okay, so who shall lead the what? The WRF. I'm gonna put a poll, so don't answer in the chat. Well, I guess you can if you want to just talk, but Tukha uh, Chepski Katyusha. Whoops. People's Marshal. Whoop. Marshal Zukov slash Nona. Okay. Okay, the polls are open. This is a really big decision, so we might wait up to five minutes, or if it just seems like nobody else is voting, we'll stop. Let's do a save file in case I misclick. Uh, so straw poll is open. Straw poll is open. I put the anime characters in there. So the Red Napoleon means Tukachevsky means Katyusha. And the People's Marshal means Zukov means Nona. Okay? Uh, let's see. WRRF. Leader. Choice. I should have said funny lowly or big booba. <laughs> She's also quite tall. Isn't isn't Nona like the tallest character in the show? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't seen the uh I haven't seen the Das Finale movies. Nor am I familiar with the manga. I just saw the original season in the first movie. And I actually saw it a second time recently, uh back in February we did that watch along. Yeah, everybody vote! Oh, it's a tight one. I'm looking at the results now. This is tight. Every vote's going to matter. There it is. It is friggin' tight. Who will it be? Paletsky's Tukachevsky or Ukta's Georgi Zukov? Mikhail Tukachevsky, Georgi Zukov. Funny Loli, Big Booba. Although you can't, you know, she's, she's keeping it professional here. So that reminds me, I don't watch um, Attack on Titan. I watched the first season and uh, I described it much as uh, uh, aggressively mediocre, so I walked away. But I've heard that there's been some, uh, you know, people complaining on Twitter again of uh, about, um, I guess, the, the, uh, hold on a sec. Uh, about like the portrayals of uh, Mikasa who is like the main character's sister and so apparently people always complain that she's portrayed too masculinely because she has muscles which is like isn't she like the best fighter like why wouldn't she be like ripped like I remember I just once saw a thing and it was like her like a picture and it was her un with her shirt unbuttoned and so like she saw her rippling abs um so but, but I guess, like, somebody on Twitter said, um, oh, so we're sexualizing Mikasa now? And it was just a screenshot of her. And she was literally just sitting at the, um, sitting at, like, a, a table, like a picnic table. It was wood. And she just had a completely buttoned up 
white shirt on and yeah you could tell she had boobs but they weren't you know uh they weren't you know aggressively being shown and so and so you know really though people weren't up in arms anything people were calling this person stupid from the screenshots that i saw where it's like okay so women having boobs is sexualizing them now like are you fucking kidding me now? And it's like, and then people are going, especially after people complain that Mikasa looks too masculine, and then they actually show her with boobs. It is oh, it's too sexual. <laughs> uh, come on, y'all, still vote. I think there's like ten of you who haven't voted yet. By the way, I've already made my decision. Uh, but yeah, you, know, you can't win. You can't win for trying with some people. Oh, she's too masculine. Oh, she's too feminine. Oh, she's being overly sexualized. Yeah, let's see. Um, this is very tight. It's a two-vote race, people. Two votes. The mail-in ballots are favorite. <laughs> All right. It's so freaking tight. I think we're going to give it another like minute and a half. And, you know, that reminds me of another thing where, where there was that show, um, I don't remember what the name of it, it was like Something Something Wants to Hang Out. It's the, 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 the fucking, guys, the person who's been in the lead has been going back and forth. It is anybody's game right now. I'm officially going to give it one more minute, one more minute, and then I'm locking it in. Um... But yeah, there was that that one anime. It was called like something something wants to hang out. I think it was about like a guy who's at college, and then somebody he used to know becomes a, is like a freshman, and she wants to hang out. And it's supposed to be like a slice of life thing. I don't know. I didn't personally watch it, but I do remember people were pissed because she had these enormous boobs, and so people were going like, "Oh my god, anime is disgusting. This is so unrealistic. These body proportions." And then you had people posting images of women who did have those body proportions and things like that and and it's like oh uh, you know she's being over sexualized now i did say that i didn't watch it now i have seen a couple of clips though and just from the small clips that i've seen it doesn't seem like she's sexualized like i think i saw two only though so i, I don't really know um but but one i remember was like they were at a, ba a batting cage and she's uh in like she she doesn't stretch and so she she swings and like fucks up her back and there's just this nasty sound of like her you know it's just like this uh, oh that's it that's it oh shit it's been a minute okay we're done we're done voting's over so the winner by two votes is the red napoleon mikhail tukachevsky the one, the only, the drifting snow got you show. And that's it. It's over. It is over. That was an extremely tight vote. Now, I'm going to tell you the decision I made before you guys even voted. Um, we're actually just going to end up doing both paths. <laughs> uh, so... I just was wanting you guys to vote on which one we're gonna do first, and when you and, and I have had that plan for a while, um, because the uh, and, you, and when it, I think it's in either one of my Pravda France or in one of my Patagonian Workers Front campaigns, but I do mention that like just like I split that campaign into the Patagonians and then Pravda France, I'm gonna also do that here. So we're gonna we're gonna do a stream of one of them. In this case, it's gonna be uh, Tukachevsky, aka Katusha, and then. We'll continue the live stream series by then coming back to the save file and we're going to do Zukov's, okay? So everybody gets their waifu. Oh, we got a lot of viewers who came in for the voting. Um, but wow, that was extremely close. I don't know if that's the closest vote I've ever seen, but it probably is. Two, two votes. Uh, okay, so. A kingdom without an heir invites chaos through interim. A kingdom with more than one chaos through civil war. So does the West Russian Revolutionary Front seem to shamble towards the ladder without pause. Its aging patriarch Clement Voroshilov 
weakens in strength and vigor with every moment he holds the title and duties of Grand Marshal. Many fear the day the hero of West Russia is confined to bed rest until his passing, not simply out of concern for the man's health. Oh, somebody voted late and went to Katyusha that just came in right now. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, many fear the hero is confined to bed rest until his passing, not simply out of concern for the bedlam that may yet ensue after his funeral. For as it stands, there are two contenders laying claim to Grand Marshal Voroshilov's legacy, Mikhail Tukhachevsky and Georgi Zukov. For all that they are each other's polar opposites in many respects, philosophies, temperament, methods, temperament, excuse me, methods, the front's two greatest generals are also each other's equals. That's supposed to say most of all, in skill. A stalemate such as this will only be resolved by beings greater than mortal men. Thus have the fates, in all their omniscience, chosen, meaning me, you know, the Red Napoleon. There it is, the Red Bonaparte. We are committed now, people. Uh, I think we probably should do something about the food, though, first. Uh, oh, but if we come down here, the professionalism will start to improve. So, you know what? Let's, um... Let's go do this real quick. Investments in Pelensky. And also, is there a descriptor on this? Yes, the Red Bonaparte, the Marshal of the Soviet Union, the military seat of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, and one of its prime contenders for succession. Mikhail Tukhachevsky is known for all of these things and has become one of the most prominent figures marching for leadership across the West Russian Revolutionary Front. Having served the Tsar during the time of the Russian Empire, he only met his first true command during the invasion of the Poles, where he found dual success while creating new and revolutionary new theories in military operations. Um, his praise was short-lived, as despite all of his glorious successes, General Secretary Bukharin still led all of our Soviet Union to absolute destruction. Here we are now, as Mikhail Tukhachevsky continues to prop up the notion of forming the front into an invasion force, allying himself with a clique of Red Army generals, including the esteemed Dmitry Ustinov ready to find glory through the reclamation of the Russian lands by way of the Red Army itself. Come on, let go. Uh-huh. Uzaki-chan wants to hang out. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess that was the name of it. But yeah, I just remember when she's in that batting cage and swings. Like, that was one of the only clips I saw. And the, the, the noise they make for the sound effect, ooh, it was so nasty. Um... Let us focus on research. Uh, we don't have guns. The Red Bonaparte. As Tugachevsky joined the two figures on the hill, he announced his presence with a gruff, Obervek Ustinov. I'm going to kind of go squeaky, because, you know, lo lowly. Um, uh, Ustinov snapped to attention while Oberovich uh, simply nodded. <coughs> Major General Ustinov and I were inspecting the troops, as it were. These men are undisciplined, Mikhail scowled as he watched the so-called platoon. Marching in lockstep, interpretive dance aside, stumbling was a better term. Tukhachevsky marched smartly down the hill, barking, Attention! The men dragged their feet as they rose. The drill instructor did something like a salute, but not. Comrade Tukhachevsky! The man's smile withered at the marshal's gaze. Your name? Er, uh, Antonin, sir. Sergeant Antonin Orlov. Uh, Private Orlov, fall in line! The man opened, the man, mouth open, started to speak. Now, Private! Dukachevsky shook his head as Orlov fell in. The Red Army, the pride of the Union, the sword of the revolutionaries, reduced to this. Pathetic! The marshal's glit You know what? I, I need to, like, pick up her voice. Let me look her up. Give me a second here. Okay. Uh, Girls and Panzer, Katyusha. G give me a second here. Yeah. Okay, give me a second here. Uh, Best of Katyusha. Our wheat fields and dig up our potatoes. You need 
need to wipe. I know. What are you doing? Okay, so it's kind of high. It's really squeaky. That might be easier to do than trying to do that. I might might just do the dub version and not also be trying to do the accent. You know? Hold on. Let me let me try to pick it up and get a little more. For their surrender conditions, how about we make? Hold on. Conditions? How about we make them pull the weeds in our school for three months, tend to our wheat fields, and dig up our potatoes? You need. Okay. So. Ding. Okay. The Red Army, the pride of the Union, the sword of the Revolution, reduced to this pathetic! The Marshal's glare alone was enough to freeze the men where they uh, stood. You will address me as Marshal! You will follow every order I give without question! I will put you through hell and back, and you will learn to thank me for it! Am I understood? Yes, sir! The men shouted meekly. It's a start! Tukhachevsky pointed at the field. Run! All of you! Twenty times around the field! Now! A shocked silence. Then they burst into sprints like dominoes falling. He gave them a ten-second lead. By the end of their task, he was in the front of the pack, bringing discipline to the ranks. Nice, right, get in there and do some PT! Uh, alright. Now, um, we could do the manpower thing, and goodness gracious, I am tempted. We're also going to need some army experience later. Mm. Oh, what is this? The succession of Voroshilov. The WRRF remains the most powerful polity in the shattered Russia. Marshal Voroshilov, the old leader of the WRRF, has become senile. His days are spent murmuring about old wars and old comrades. From the ranks have emerged Marshal Zukov and Tukhachevsky, generals of Bukharin's old union. The two lie in a bitter power struggle. There are two cliques in an open political war to determine who will lead the most legitimate successor to the Red Army and ultimately the Union. Two contenders exist for the title of Grand Marshal, and therefore the position at Voroshilov's successor, Mikhail Tukhachevsky and Georgi Zukov. The balance of power within the front is in favor of Muk Mikhail Tukhachevsky, I guess because we just did that. It's 27 to 25. Level of concerning factionalism within the front is low. Reforms to the front and decisions to support a candidate can be undertaken below. This is interesting. Uh, so, let's see. Factionalism we're probably supposed to keep low, right? Curtail the influence of Georgi Zukov. Extrajudicial measures will be taken. We could set fire to the oil wells. We probably shouldn't do that. We're going to need those later. <laughs> uh... Operation Snow Maiden, which we cannot afford. The border war. Zukov is making news. So increase the influence of Georgie Zukov by a small amount as well as factionalism. Let's meet with the veterans. It'll decrease factionalism and increase my own influence. So let's definitely do that. And uh, you know what? I think we might try this Snow Maiden thing for funsies. Except we don't have guns. Hmm... Succession gets iffy if the factionalism's too bad. Hmm. Uh, well, we just have to keep a slight lead. It's fine. Right? Meet with Voroshilov. Travel there to meet him. Okay, let's do that. we we'll do that in 29 days. Gosh, we got a lot of political power. Um, it's not like we can get a theorist now or anything. Who's leading Scotland because there's a Scottish marshal in the Union? Uh, the current leader is Robert McIntyre. I wonder if there's any relation to Drew. Um, his glasses are cute. Um... I think I might try to just hold on to a lot of this political power. You know, eventually we're going to have to core stuff, so let's kind of put it in the bank, so to speak. Hmm. All right. So what else do we want to look at? Like, what are the free aviators got? Of course, the Marmaduke Grove portrait from Kaiserreich. Fantastic. One of the best. Gotta love it. Hmm. What is anime Hitler? Okay, we're looking at Hitler one more time. But everybody keeps requesting the same three people. It's just Hitler, Himmler, and Nixon. 
Come on, let's do something fresh. Like, why does anybody want to see what Afghanistan looks like? Oh my, is this supposed to be based on that picture of that one woman in the magazine? Huh. See, you know what? Why does nobody say, can we look at Peru? You know? <laughs> so it's the same three. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's start doing the army professionalism thing, and then we're gonna try to fix this agriculture problem. War communism. The front will again march forward. Guangzhongwu. Uh, which one is that? Is Guangdong here? Money. <laughs> uh, then there's Guizhuo. Oh, she has a uh, heterochromatic eyes. Do you guys see that? Like this one's yellow, and this one looks blue. Interesting. Okay, uh, the Republic of India under Jawaharlal Nehru. I hope this gets updated sooner rather than later. I'm sure it's not a high priority though. Oh, oh whoa, 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 ah, we're getting some lag. Don't you dare fucking crash. Here we go. It's Tito time. Oh my gosh. No wonder she was able to... Look at this cutie. No wonder she was able to unite the... Oh, thank you very much for the super chat. Can we get Lester B. Person from Canada? Are they in charge right now? Uh, yeah, there we go. Wow, nice suit. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for the super chat. Always greatly appreciated. It's what keeps these live streams going. Uh, let's see. Long Yun. Oh, nice fingernails, Long Yun. Very, very moe. Tito's kind of hot, though. <laughs> you guys see Tito, it's like, oh, uh, what the fuck? I love Yugoslavia now. <laughs> anyway, um, let's prepare for a raid against these so-called anti-communists. Whatever. Um, man, I kind of want to train the troops, but it's just not a good use for it. The super chat cover the portrait. Oh no, which one? Which one got covered when I was? Oh yeah, because it's in the top left. Sorry. Civil Rights Act of '72. A turning point in the story of their nation. So they've got token civil rights legislation. It's also scavenged for loot. Canada. Oh, they covered Canada. Sorry about that. Yeah, here's Lester Pearson. I was saying, nice suit. Very, very nice. Um, Siberian Black Army? Sure, that is over here. Get it? <laughs> Crane115 says, Tito is my mommy now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's stretching. Oh, oh. Shouldn't have had that second bowl. Getting a little bit of the food sleepies. Uh, I've also been up since pretty early. I was up and driving around when it was still dark this morning. Okay, a meeting with Voroshilev. So this is Tukhachevsky. Uh My apologies. Would you come in here to discuss strategic decisions for the Onegin campaign? You decided I think we should hit him with artillery before doing several mass attacks on their border posts. Tukhachevsky knew he was testing him, but he could not hold himself back. Are you sure? It would give them time to prepare. I say we position our men in hidden positions nearby, doing a short motor attack before ordering mass defensives. This had been a test, but Tukhachevsky would not back down. The argument continued to go back and forth, back and forth, with voices being raised in pitch and volume every second. Voroshilov accused Tukhachevsky of being out of order for his post. And Tukhachevsky said he wouldn't have to be this way if Voroshilov wasn't such a bad strategist. Tukhachevsky stormed out seconds later. The meeting had gone exactly as expected, and the only winner had been Zukov. We can't stay on bad terms with the old man forever. So that says it increases my influence. Well, I guess... I don't know. Let's go ahead and initiate this raid, shall we? Ooh, Altuin can be upgraded. Let's not do that, though. Actually, the Winter, winter Expert would be really good right now. Um... Now, nah, never mind. We gotta save that command power for other things. Maybe before I like, hit 100 or something. Uh, initiate the raid! This is over a river. It's gonna be a little trickier. They refuse tribute. Here we go. Here we go. 
Oh, getting shrecked! They didn't have anybody on the border! Back! Back! Let's see, can I show Yagoda? Uh, let's see, is that war still going on? Whoa! Okay. Yeah. There's Yagoda, or as they said in the live stream of the reveal, a uh, big booba. Uh, let's see. You know, Directorate of State Security. Check it out. Fo focus as well. Oh, wow. You can actually see a little little, little line of bra there. Um, and there's Burita oh, up there. Valerie Sablin. Um, okay. So, oh, wow. We got some Super Chats rolling in and Super Chat requests. Thank you very much uh, for those of you donating. So, first donation says, show Longyun in Yunnan and Cuba. Okay, so first here's Longyun under, there's, well, it's it's, it's Lu Han in charge here. Longyun is, uh, is not here right now. Uh, but a very nice hat. Love the hat. There's a flower in there. There's the alerts. Oh, so, okay. I, I'll, I'm going to watch to make sure that, uh, yeah, the portrait's exactly being covered. I didn't even mean for that to happen. That's so funny. Uh, okay, so let's wait for it to go away. There it is. All right, so yeah, Lu, Lu Han. I really enjoyed This is great. The dress looks great. Um, let's wait for that to go. Okay, and then you also wanted me to show Cuba. Cuba is right here. Uh, there's Fidel Castro smoking that cigar. I'll say I'll be right back. I'm going to get some water. Oi. Baby, uh, even anime Castro loves cigars. Of course, they're Cubans, don't you know? Cuban cigars. <laughs> um, so and then before we continue on, somebody mentioned the Iberian Union. There it is, Francisco Franco, who I haven't seen those particular Guzun Pounds or films, but uh, um, yeah, there's Francisco Franco, who I think is the head of the um, the Spanish Academy. And I think they wear the blue. So I, I haven't seen the movies, but thank you very much for another super chat. Um, but but um, I'm guessing that they're wearing the blue because uh, during World War II, there were fascist Spanish volunteers that fought for Nazi Germany in, uh, in Russia. Uh, and they were called the Blue Division. Um, yeah. So there you have it. Franco, and let us resume. See how this border war is going. Okay, this uh, border war is taking an awful long time considering there's nobody here. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we have a new... Yeah, Yakubovsky is in charge now. The raid was successful. Food for the hungry. Nice. Does that mean so, like, we looted food, too? What's this? A courtesy call. Telegram delivered to Tukhachevsky. Uh, he wanted some experienced officers sent north in exchange of fresh batch of recruits with college level education would be sent south to the military frontier for training. Uh, did not change the fact good officers were hard to come by. The general filled relocation order after relocation order. His hand was cramped from signing so many orders. Upon being summoned, his assistant began transferring each order in an envelope. All this mail would be forwarded to the various sectors of the front. Orders are orders. Uh, okay. Gluzman says, uh, everyone has an anime portrait except for Farah Pahlavi because she's already an anime girl. <laughs> okay, let's work on this agricultural, uh, situation. They're steadfast, but they need food in their stomachs. Oh, yeah, Iceland! I'm so sorry, Mad Beast. I'm so sorry. It's because I went to go get water. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for reminding me. Um, 
my apologies. Here's the U.S. forces in Iceland under Guy S. Melloy. Melloy. Wow, this person is ready to go. It should, bro. I'm waiting for Hitler to make a move, bro. Let's do it. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Look at those yellow eyes. Uh, okay, don't want I just don't want to do that with the troops. Um, fun new agricultural methods. Yes, yes, we have to do that because I think we're going to start getting hurt with that later. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to when we take this one. Food for the hungry. At long last, everyone finally has food for the night and we need no longer work on empty bellies and broken hearts. Living off of half rations for months has taught us all temperance and composure but not at our minds in a silent and icy hysteria. Now we have plenty of food for generations to come. And the people of Western, the, the West Russian Revolutionary Front begin their toils without hunger bothering them through their maddeningly some tiresome days. Guess we're not going hungry tonight. Nice. So we already solved the hunger crisis? <laughs> but yes, thanks for the super chats. Any other requests out there? Ten bucks, the U.S. has nukes in Iceland. I'm trying to remember if they start with nukes in Iceland or if you do that later. I I, I, know, I know Glenn can do that. Like, he, he can set up nukes in Iceland and also in um, in Australia. Oh, what a cutie! Brazil wins the World Cup Finals 3-1 to one over Hungary in Santiago. While Chile's ability to host the 1962 World Cup has been questioned following a devastating earthquake in the country two years ago, the Chilean effort to rebuild and complete the preparations are an international admiration. So, well done, Jorge Alessandri. The tournament became marred in controversy, however, with violent clashes erupting between Italian and Chilean teams and what the media has labeled the Battle of Santiago. Local police forces were later required when violence erupted between German and Hungarian fans following the semifinal loss. Hold on a sec against uh, Hungary, with Germany finishing in fourth place after going on to lose the third place playoff against hosts Chile. Congratulations to the champions. Uh, now, the collapse of the triumvirate. Oh, the Duce is not happy right now. But you know that Chilean thing? I'm gonna pull up. I wanna try to find it. Uh, this, this, like, um, there was this clip of, uh, of a freaking oh my gosh i'm so sorry i'm online so somebody just sent me a, a message through steam give me a second Hold on. uh so so yeah yeah the battle of santiago thing uh there's a really funny announcer video i got to show here um Let's see, uh, let's see here, um, that event, which one are you talking about the collapse of the triumvirate one? Um, let's see here, uh, let's see here, uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, the collapse of the Triumvirate in the wake of the bombing of the Triumvirate Conference in Malsa would appear as though whatever chances the Fragile Alliance had went down in flames. Uh... Uh, with two of the Alliance's three major powers leaving, it is safe to say that the days of the Triumvirate are over. Turkey has made fresh calls for territorial rights. Syria, whatever. It's the Duke Jam. Yeah, I'm sorry about that slight interruption, guys. I usually try to remember to go offline unless I'm achievement hunting, so that was my bad. Okay. Uh, alright. So, agricultural situation. Um, what is that situation? Yulia carried the food rations home. Even with the diminished supply of food, it was difficult for her to bring everything back home by herself. Her husband toiled in his factory at this time of the day and could not help her bring home the family's supplies for the week. Once home, the food was unpacked and set in front of her on the table. A careful balancing act had to follow. Her husband received a further share of the week's uh, a, fair, a fair share of the week's calorie supply. Reducing his allotment any further might lead to him collapsing again at his workshop. Factory work was energy intensive. 
Stale flour from Komi made up a lot of the week's food. She reserved some of the canned vegetables for Alyosha. The boy had recently gotten over a nasty flu and uh, needed the extra vitamins. On and on her calculations and allocations went. Eventually, she had a good idea of how to stretch out the food for the week. Iluya could not help but notice the week's total was smaller than the previous week. A border conflict in the south had disrupted the transport network. This must have delayed food imports considerably. Added to that issue was the year's meager harvest. Farming this close to the Arctic Circle was not a simple proposition. As a result, the front's government had to dip into its food reserve every year. The increasingly low level of stockpiles was an open secret. The region faced starvation within the next few years if nothing was done. There was not uh, Yulia could do about it. In the summer months, she would have access to her small garden plot anew. anew. There, at least, could come a few extra nutrients for the family's needs. Yeah, but we kind of already fixed it. <laughs> you know? um, the Ketergulin Isles? Uh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, but yeah, I was going to look up the, the chili thing. You guys are going to love this. Um, let me shut the music. So yeah, that, that fight that it was just talking about that broke out... This is an announcer, a British announcer from back then in the 60s, uh, talking about it. Hold on. Here we go, here we go. Um, there. Good evening. The game you're about to see is the most stupid, appalling, disgusting, and disgraceful exhibition of football possibly in the history of the game. Chile versus Italy. This is the first time the two countries have met. We hope it will be the last. The national motto of Chile reads, by reason or by force. Today, the Chileans were prepared to be reasonable. The Italians only use force. And the result was a disaster for the World Cup. Now, if the World Cup is going to survive in its present form, something's got to be done about teams that play like this. Indeed, after seeing the film tonight, you at home may well think that teams that play in this manner or to be expelled immediately from the competition. Just see what you think. Yeah, so he, uh, he yeah, he, he let them know. He let them know. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, that that battle in the event, the, the Battle of Santiago, as they say, that was a real thing. Um, <laughs> thought you would find it interesting. Okay. Uh, so. Let's keep moving, shall we? Uh, ration calculations, modify security. Ooh, more political power gain. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, time to train our troops, or should we do... No, industrial investments. Yes, yes, yes. Always the industrial investments. <laughs> oh, Vorkuta's been raiding into other areas, it looks like. The Italians don't get tired of war. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, what do we got here? We can keep meeting with the uh, the veterans. I think this is just the best thing to keep doing. Oh, if we hold a military parade, we can uh, we can start to improve our army professionalism. But we have guns, which we do not have. Damn it. At the current rate, to even fill up, the, it's going to take us two years just to get the guns we don't have right now. Let's look at uh, Noah Polsky. Degenerates. Oh, I know that Triple Eight Alpha Bull didn't just come in here and say that the Boston Red Sox are the best team. Oh, you know, it's so great. The Boston Red Sox. And then, like, a day down at Fenway. And then says other people are degenerate. All right. So, um. This is Kislorda. That is a very rectangular, uh, it's a squat uh, Ushenka right there. Uh, but Nova Polska under Marian Spychalski. Okay. She's wearing headphones. Does this mean she has two sets of ears? Because these are presumably covering one pair of headphones, but she has other heads up, ears up there. That might be useful. Um, anyway... Oh, the Jimmies have been rustled. Oh, you know, we Bostonians, we really got them. Go suck Marky Mark, bro. And, <laughs> all right. That was probably a little aggressive. I'm sorry. Um, cat girls rule Poland. Nova Poland. She's a gamer. That's right. We got the gamers are in charge of Poland now. Then they might have a chance against... Um, against <laughs> they might now stand a chance against the German Reich. 
All right, we're about halfway through 62, about six months. Things are really going to start popping off. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Oh, War in the Desert is beginning now. Uh, young nationalists march through the streets of Ankara, calling on Turks to lead us to victory. Comparatively, in Italy, the public has shown little to no support for the war, with many even questioning why Italy is even in Cyprus in the first place. As we, Because as we all know, Cyprus is proper English clay. Just ask Richard Lionheart. Oh, no! Tito's down! Tito is down! Oh, Tito's rebellion has been toppled and the upstart regime has been reintegrated into the Italian Empire. Multiple nations have already condemned this intervention as a brutal repression of Croatian self-determination. While the partisans will keep fighting for socialism and liberation, it appears the dream of Croatian independence is shattered. Winter has come to Croatia. Um, but yeah, we got the governor of the Levant here. We're gonna try to keep track of, uh, you know, as the new people come in down here. Hey, isn't this one of the Hollow Life Japanese characters? Uh, I don't, I don't know her name. I don't know the Japanese ones really. Um, let's see her. Let's see here. What? The People's Revolutionary Council fights with Meng Jan. Wow, what a portrait! So colorful. That's great. I like that. Demchu Dongrub. Who is this? Spirit of Genghis. The blood of Genghis Khan's Borjin clan flows through Prince Don Chung Dongrub's veins, though one would not guess it from looking at him. Interesting. He united Inner and Outer Mongolia. He was a du jour vassal of the figurehead Emperor Puyi, thus making him a puppet of a puppet. Yeah. Great portrait, though. Great. Um, her name is Okami Mio. Uh, oh, the uh, the Hollow Life one. Thank you. Um, so, calculating ration size. Uh, spy car carried away. Deadly carry. It gets. It's just saying that you know. There's still rationing going on, but we're kind of all right. Um, oh, let's get some support equipment, though. Yeah, I think the only Hollow Life Japanese ones whose name I know are there's like Korone, I know Pekora, because she's hilarious. She's a comedian, if you guys didn't know. Um, is that it? Oh, Noel. Yeah, Noel, the, uh, the like warrior one who uses the mace. So I saw this funny clip. You see, I usually don't have time to catch Hollow Life streams or anyway, so I just kind of catch highlight streams or really funny stuff. And um, it was this published military theory. Uh, published military militia army in Operation Suvorov, contemporary analysis, and excerpt from Tukhachevsky's new military memoir. Ooh, a military treatise? That sounds fun. Um... But uh, what was I gonna say? That one, the the one, uh, uh, Noel. Uh, I, I saw this really funny clip uh, where she was talk. She was asked about uh, the armor that she wears. Let me try to pull up a picture uh, so you guys have context for the story. Okay, that's not a good picture. Uh, where is she? Okay, what the heck? It's not wanting to give me the pictures. What the fuck? is going on here um dang this is a good picture with her mace but i can't seem to use it here we go promoting the intake of calcium strong bones strong teeth people anyway so this character of noel uh this is her armor as you can see and she was once asked uh, so why does your armor look like that and she actually then like zooms out so you could see her whole body and she actually gives a very good explanation explaining well you know i I, it's, I have asymmetrical armor because I hold my mace in one hand and I turn towards the enemy with the other so that the armor is protecting me. Which is true. Asymmetrical armor was a thing. Um, but then, uh, so she spends like three minutes explaining asymmetrical armor. And then somebody said, and then I guess the person then followed up with, okay, that's cool, but why are your tits out? And then she just goes, hey, hey, you know what? Do you, what, do you want me to get a heat rash? It gets sweaty. You know, your, your skin needs to breathe. It was so fucking funny. <laughs> I have to say, three minute real life explanation then. But why the boobs out? <laughs> oh, man. 
Okay, so we can secure control. Which one is that again? Oh, yes, weekly stability. Yes, 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 yes. We're only at 1% right now. We need to fix that. Um, Italy wins the Italo-Turkish War. That was quick. That was real quick. Demilitarized zone has been established. Oh, the kettle! Oh, I'll be right back. I was going to get tea. Just a minute. Like I said, I'll, be, I'll be right back. was annoying freaking I forgot to turn the kettle on so the water was cold so now I actually turned it on um, let's see Iran under Mohammad Reza Pavli so if we keep playing until the Iranian civil war breaks out we're gonna have to see what they do with the daughter somebody said that there's no portrait for the daughter she's already an anime girl oh yeah here's Iraq Another uh, heterochromatic eyes character. So an excerpt from Tukhachevsky's new memoir, taken from chapter 3, page 204, of The Structure of the Militia Army in Operation Suvorov, a Suvorov by Mikhail Tukhachevsky. I don't think that's really a memoir. It's a military treatise. Um, oh, who's, who's running Moscow? Here, you guys can look at that. Who, uh, ugh. Oh boy, that's a bad German. Uh, this is the enemy. Uh, anyway, back to Tukhachevsky's uh, military treatise here. Let's read that. Um, the fault of the operation's failure can be put solely on the so shoulders of two men, Mikhail Suslov and Georgi Zukov. While the front was plotting its hardest and made great gains, Suslov had been plotting its demise since the beginning, anticipating, for the, per anticipating the perfect moment for his betrayal. And while the true men of the Red Army put everything they had into the greatest battle for Russia, Zukov showed the greatest immaturity and made numerous anticipated strategic blunders. <clears throat> that wretched Suslov could perhaps be considered Russia's greatest traitor during the greatest test of Russian courage as the front had to evacuate in the face of renewed Hunnic offensive, Suslov chose not to fight for the motherland, but he chose to betray us. Uh, biting his, it, sus in his, in his name, for God's sake, Susloff. Um, so, uh, uh, biding his time until we were vulnerable, he and his co-conspirators attempted to coup our rightful government. Luckily, his attempts were thwarted, but his scheme still cost us any chance of keeping the front together and allowed it to dissolve to reactionary warlords. Um, Zoo... Zukov's attitude towards the war was one of immaturity with a healthy amount of misconduct. His inability to put aside political differences and disappointing attitude in battle made him the laughingstock of officers and soldiers alike. What actually cost us the battle, however, was Zukov's, Zukov's indifference towards strategy. His strategic incompetence meant that men were ap applied incorrectly, costing lives and entire battles. If only Zukov had paid attention in officer school, perhaps I'd be writing victory memoirs in Moscow rather than ones of defeat in Arkhangsk. We were this close. Nice, we got land doctrine research off that. Hell yeah. So what are we going to do, guys? Combined operations, right? Like, that's... Zukov was into that. Uh, not Zukov. Yeah, we got to do that. Combined operations. Um, Dukachevsky was so into that. He was a visionary. Of course, he didn't envision the bullet going in his head. Am I right? Okay, an ultimatum. Who the fuck is this? Onega? Onega? <laughs> Onega's attacking me. Onega, please. All right. 
Uh, oh yeah, we didn't even see who's in charge here. Vladimir Kirpichnikov. Those aren't even real ears. She's faking. They're not even real cat girls. They're fake Russians. Um, so. Uh, we have received an ultimatum from Onega. They are demanding that we hand over a tribute of loot or else they will raid us and take it from us anyway. We are at an impasse to decide. Do we decide to engage in confrontation with Onega, possibly risking our men dying at the hands? You know, we're not going to back down. Tell them to eat shit! Anti-communist cat girls. Never thought I'd see the day. Look at these losers! You can't break through shit, bruh! Oh, now the general doesn't change. Enemy has been defeated. Stability. Rifles. Political power. All delicious. Nom, 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 Oh, God. They're really trying to tempt me into training my troops. Yeah, we've been pissing through a lot of this political power. I think I didn't spend it on the troops and whatnot. Factionalism's so low, but Zukov's about to make a move. Yes. Hurrah! Get ready for a lot of urras in the chat, in the, in, in the chat as we go. Yeah, we're not going to train the troops. This is freaking Russia, people. That 75 political power could be much better applied later. Um, okay, on the clock. Ugh, it's going to hurt us. Uh... Let's go on the clock. We do, Let me double check. We do have to do both of these, right? Yeah, we got to have food security, and we got to have done heroic 46 years. So let's just keep moving. Uh, food stocks are in a desperate situation, whatever. All right. Who else do we want to look at? Oh, did Tomsk go humanist? <gasps> Our friend Shostakovich! is in charge of Tomsk. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Blessed run already. So now the question is, do we want him to win in the in Eastern Russia so that he's successful or do we not want him to win so that he doesn't, uh, oh, the SNP uh, is held on over here in Scotland. Um, uh, do, do we not want him to, to succeed so then we don't have to kill him later? I don't know. But then again, maybe, I don't know. But the free aviators? Oh yeah, it's the Barber Duke Grove picture from Kaiserreich. It's great. Um, focus on research. Right, 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 right. But where is it? There we go. Focus on research. All right, and then we're gonna lose some political power right now. So at least agriculture's going up for now. Chadamir, <laughs> I hope you ain't talking about a czar. All us Bolsheviks hate the czars. I'm sure you're you mean this right? Yeah, Vladimir the Third, currently doing despotism. Mother Russia bleeds. <gasps> Dismiss their bishop of Vyatka. Focus. Does Ibn Saud have the same portrait as in Moirike? I don't know. No, this is a different picture. That's a great looking one though. So many good pictures here. This is this is quality stuff. Um Okay, we're scavenging for loot still up there. Zukov's about to make some moves again. Let's just meet with the veterans before we lose the uh Ah! Oh, we can purchase infantry equipment now. Yes, 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 yes. Give it to me. Give me that too. And we have just enough to speak with the veterans, meet with them. Uh, okay, we're keeping a healthy lead, but yeah, he's he's coming hard. Um, he's not making it easy. But I want us to be able to hold that military parade if we can, so we can start getting our army professionalism up even more. Who's in charge of Mexico? Hmm. Andrew Adolfo Lopez Mateos. Uh, I wouldn't say this is the best picture. 
Hmm. Okay. Oh, shoot. Come on, come on. But yeah, it's not like Mexico is a main country anyway. Oh, the U.S. war with Guyana has started. Uh, we have this many tons of canned beans. 15 tons, 14.83 cans of beans are eaten every day. Tons of beans. Right away, Colonel. Little Igor shut his office door. What if the Red Army were only losing beans? Oh, so this this guy is uh he's having his son. His son, I guess, is uh helping the quartermaster's son is helping him count the beans and he's using it as like a math problem. Would I ever do a Balkan country playthrough, or is that out of the question? No, it's definitely not out of the question. I I would want to play Tito actually. I think I've said that before because um, it seems very challenging. Can I do a Brooklyn accent? Oh, you mean like Joey from uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! You know it! Brooklyn Rage! Uh, you know, flawless. Um, yes, army professionalism keeps spiking it. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we're going up two a day right now. Yeah, that would be great if we could go from uh, the cronyism to just political interference, which sounds weird, but... It's going gonna, it's gonna to help with um, a couple of different things. Unfortunately, we're going to lose more daily political power when we go up there. But I think the better guns will make it worth it. That Brooklyn accent was just breathtaking. Oh, I'm charmed. I really am. Uh, <laughs> how much political power are we getting a day right now? Oh, we actually are slightly in the negatives because we're focusing on research and securing control. Damn. Yeah, we have a couple of different things that are hurting us at the moment. Where our stability is going to go down. Is there anything over here that's going to help me with political power? Hmm. We got 75 here, but I think our spending political power on things days are over. Do Bugs Bunny? <laughs> I don't even know what entirely what that means. Uh, hold on. Can we do another raid now? Oh, no, we can do even better. Uh, let's do research facilities. No, I should have done industry. Whatever. Did I miss the Farouk portrait? Where's Farouk? Yeah, this one? No, we haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> F -f -f Pharaoh and the Jets. Uh, you know, yeah. What's up, Doc? I was having carrots earlier. <laughs> Let's do... I think we want to go horizontal. Oh, the repair is pretty good, though. Here we go. Ah, another super chat! Thank you very much! Uh, Dimitri has the same portrait in the Moe Order as Moe Reich, and Mexico shares a portrait with the Sock Dem leader of Mexico and Kaiser Reich. Cool, I like that. Oh yeah, there is um there is definitely um crossover in uh in terms of Kaiser Reich to the Moe Order. Of course, it's not all going to be 100%. That's basically impossible, but. Uh, th that's why I wanted to do the West Revolutionary Front first because um, you have Zukov played by Nona, just as she is in the Mo in Moe Reich, and Tukhachevsky is played by um, Katyusha, just as in Moe Reich. The order failed, bastards! They didn't give us guns. All right, Zukov is about to take the lead. Maybe he's at forty-one point five. Let's see what happens in two days. Uh, the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet has defeated the Buryat Autonomous Soviet Soviet Republic in a war. To the madness of daring, we chant a song. So Yagoda wins, people! I don't know who had that, but uh, money's in the mail. No, <laughs> uh, Where the front currently resides, vast land... So, so let's keep in mind, though, that even if... Okay, we still have a slight lead. Um, we might have to... Uh, I don't want to work against Zukov, though, because it's going to increase factional, factionalism and worse, it hurts stability. But we haven't done a lot of the stuff that's on this path yet, which is going to increase the influence of Tukhachevsky. So it's going to work out in the end. Yep, Sablin's gone. 
Welcome to Ancapistan. You think that Irktusk is Ancap? Are we just throwing out words? <laughs> what? Or am I missing something? Speaking of Ancap, what's going on over here? No national focus. Promise to reform. Yeah, let's keep an eye out for what they're going to do here. Yeltsin's drunk dream. But here in Sviridzlov, still Rokosovsky in charge out here. I don't really know the path of this too well. Matai has assumed control of the Gulf. Oh, Zatislav. Oh. Over here. Ah, the Ancapistan, how they just screwed us. Yeah, freaking Dragonoff. Tengrenrompa. Is it possible for these guys to, uh, to even unite Russia? Is there a super event for it? I say this is somebody who put together the compilation video, you know? I'm not sure it exists. Hmm. Let's see here. Hmm. Irtus is obviously communist. Yeah, I think I misunderstood Somerville when he was saying at Capistan. I think I, because of the slight delay, I thought that he was talking about Irtus. So my apologies, my apologies. Very sorry. They can shatter Western Siberia, but no more. Okay. Uh, let's do some pragmatic diplomacy. First comes a full stomach, then comes ethics. Then comes a baby carriage, or however it goes. All right, at least we're now getting some positive political power a day. But it's going to take us a long time to dig out of this hole. Oh, no! Zukov is tied with us! You know, we just need to not panic. we got to get rid of the agricultural insecurity entirely, because it's hurting our daily political power gain. So let's just... Just just get through this, and then it's going to be two more months after that. We'll be rid of it, and then we can move on. And, and so, so Zukov's going to get a slight lead, but I think we can catch up. Oh! And cap ear cuts would be hilarious. It would be very, very strange. Hmm. Want to keep working on an industry, maybe? Strength and muscle and jungle work. Uh, yeah, let's come over here. Yeah, come out here, right here. Hmm. Zukov's lead is from the mail in ballots, it's just an illusion. It's also kind of funny because during the the polling we did earlier, it was going back and forth who was in the lead there. I wonder what's gonna happen down in Comey. Oh, believe in Svetlana. Eric Koch severely injured in Kiev bombing. Troubling news from a troubled land. Uh. Let's see here. What use is there to make a deal with the dead warlord? State, let's confide most of their charges. Two meals a day. Let's see here. Each bite reminded Greco of his labor's fruits. Thick slices of do Doktorska Kolbasa. I know what Kolbasa is, but I don't know about Doktorskaya Kolbasa. It's like a sausage or something. Let me look it up. Doctor's sausage. A popular variety of boiled sausage in Russia and former Soviet republics. A sort of low fat bologna. Low in, pale pink in color, low fat content. Hmm. Okay. Bologna, you know, could be good if you actually cook it. A lot of people hate on bologna. 
And I think it's just because it's a cheap meat. People people look down on it. Uh, here we go. What's this? The traitor general, the state of Voldag, bounded on the betrayal of Ivan Ivanov to advance in the German territory. is a free state, a neutral zone for all Russians. We will form closer economic ties. Okay, so these people are neutral here. Ivanov. Katyusha and Volda sitting in a tree. G uh, so we're gonna do that because this costs us political power and this will influence Sukov. So yeah, we're going we're going this way. Uh, an additional way for food to flow. This will increase our influence. Yeah, look oh no, Zukov is taking the lead. Greeting the butcher. Uh Gulag Hall Energy. Would you have us free to death? Hmm. Let's see, I'm about to crack open a cold non alcoholic beverage for the boys. So I remember once, uh, this was years ago, a friend of mine and I, we were watching, uh, I don't remember, I think it was on Netflix or something, on guns and givings. Sales are off the table. Whatever. It's just Zalutus shit. Uh, anyway, so we were watching this video on Netflix and it was like the top 10 best sandwiches in the United States of America. And I remember, yeah, dreaded run from it, the People's Marshal still arrives. It's looking that way and I don't like it. It's gonna, it's gonna... Zukov is trying to usurp the will of the people. You all voted for Tukhachevsky. This is a usurpation. It's, it's reactionary. Uh, but anyway, anyway, um, so we were watching this thing. And it was like the top 10 sandwiches in uh, the United States of America. And it's supposed to be like some of the best sandwiches, uh, that, that are made. Like specific ones, not something like a hamburger. Like an actual restaurant specific thing. Nice Gil Scott hair and reference Soul Sealist. And so anyway, I remember that number nine on the uh, on the list was like this. I think it was a one hundred dollar sandwich that had like it was freaking there was lobster in it and truffle oil and all that other bullshit that's used to spike the the cost of something. Um, so it was this hundred dollar thing, and then the number eight sandwich was this like little mom and pop diner in like Georgia or something that 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 was like a little local place and people loved it and then nobody um nobody knew what was in it because like they were give the ingredients for all the sandwiches like how they're made but that one like it was being run by the son cuz like the father who had originally founded it had passed away but they were talking to the son and, and some other members of the family who also worked at the restaurant and they would just not say what the heck is uh, in the sandwich. And the, the only thing they would say is that it was bologna based though. And that they would cook it for like three hours. Wow, what an interesting portrait. Who is this? Omar Ali Saifdien III is now the next Sultan. Wait, where's this? Uh, the leader of Sunyan in Brunei. The tiger of the east roars once more. Where is this at? I don't know what country this is. Ah, there's the old Puyi one. Who, oh, there we go, there we go, in, in Sionyan. Huh, that is some interesting hair. Okay, anyway, uh, so I just thought that was so funny and really cool, actually, that this, like, $100 just expensive for the sake of being expensive sandwich was the outdone by a bologna one. But, yeah, so the only thing they would do is, like, yeah, we cook the I, I show up. He was, guy was just saying, yeah, I, I come in three hours before we open so I can put the bologna cooking. Um, and then, uh, they, but he wouldn't say what the rest of the ingredients were, so they started to interview people in the, uh, in the restaurant, like, what do you think is in this? And then I just heard there was this one lady who she like was eating it and she puts the sandwich down and she opens it up and there's like this kind of yellow mush sauce on the top and things like that. And she just looks at it and then looks back at the cameraman and goes, I, I don't know. <laughs> what? Pretty sure the Burma leader is a Pokemon gym leader. 
You might be right. I think I saw her in a trailer for Sword and Shield. I don't know. I'm never going to play that shit. Ooh, Sword and Shield blown the fuck out. Didn't get the Conquering History Games endorsement. Ooh, woo, 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 woo. Okay, we have a tiny, tiny lead. Literally half of a point. Pizza time 2.0. Pizza time, pizza time. We have already voted, man. Secret ingredient is love. Yep. That's the way it is. Oh, the kettle! The kettle should actually be hot now. <laughs> right, hold on. I'll be right back and get my freaking tea going. You know, I was just thinking, I should learn how to, uh, I got my tea now. I should learn how to make a Russian dish. You guys know that I like to cook food from all over the world. Heck, I just made this weird variant of a Mexican dish this morning. Uh, with oats instead of pork. <laughs> um, so, I'm gonna look up how exactly you make beef stroganoff. Let's see. I'm just gonna look up what the first recipe is. It's just pasta and meat, isn't it? Uh, oh man, I friggin' hate. So many of these websites, you know, they have the super duper long, um, uh, you know, you know, they gotta, you gotta read like a fucking essay every time you wanna just look at a recipe. And I know they do that for audience retention and things like that. Um, so let's see, beef stroganoff recipe, first one I pulled up here, or not, well, the second one, I should say. Uh, okay, you need beef sirloin steak, you need mushrooms, onions, garlic, butter, beef broth, salt, Worcestershire sauce, which we can argue about if that's the proper way to pronounce it or not, flour, sour cream, noodles. <laughs> Except for the onions, not a vegetable to be found. I'm big and beefy and fatty and warming. Perfect for Russia. Keeps you, you know, so you don't freeze to death. What are some other famous Russian dishes? Uh, alright. Okay, Zukov, I think just now got a little bit more. Uh, time to uphold the system. From a poster in Arkhangel. Encouraging the strength of the Red Army to maintain control and governments over the front will allow us to secure control over everything we need and guarantee for our citizens a life of greatness through a life of dedicated socialism. So here's a fun fact uh, with Pokemon that some of you might not know. I have been doing a marathon Nuzlocke of um, Pokemon since 2016. So a Nuzlocke, for those of you who don't mean, okay, by saying a marathon Nuzlocke, what that means is I'm going to try to do a Nuzlocke in every single Pokemon game, but I'm going to stop at Ultra Sun and Moon. As far as I'm concerned, that's where the franchise ends. Um, but you play through every single one of them, and... Uh, Make some borscht. Ah, oh, yes, borscht. Hold on. Let me look that up. Borscht recipe. Uh-huh. Hold on. Beef borscht. Look that up later. So the, um... Oh, it's Coco! What? <laughs> Isn't that her? The dragon from Hololive? <laughs> Her nose looks better here than the official model. <laughs> anyway, that's great. That's funny. Of course, because Wales has the dragon on the flag. <laughs> um, God damn it, what was I going to say? Uh, Freaking... communist revolution in the levant wow that's a badass looking picture they've like welded the flag to the pole 
Uh, well, I don't think I've ever seen this. The Levantine People's Republic. Holy crap! Uh, oh yeah, so anyway, Nuzlocks. So the way Nuzlocks work, Nuzlocks, there's, a, there's like three main rules and there's variants of rules as well, but essentially... Uh, the way that it works is you are, um, if your Pokemon faints, it is considered dead. You cannot use it anymore. It doesn't matter if there's a Pokemon Center to that can revive it or you have a revive. It's dead. It's gone. Either release it or put it in your, you know, PC so you can't use it anymore. So it's a way to, like, make Pokemon more challenging. And there's other rules as well. Now, a Marathon Nuzlocke, the way that that works... Is that um, when you win, like, like, it's the same rules as a regular Nuzlocke, but also when you win the game, so like, let's say you, you beat Pokemon Red, right? Um, which is not the first game, but let's pretend it is. Uh, you then can no longer use the Pokemon that you won with anymore. So it becomes extra strategic. So, for example, like a Nidto King is super good in Gen 1. You could practically win the whole game with it alone. Hold on. Uh, poster and Arc Sangsel. Let all true proletarians know the Red Army's duties. Hold on, we gotta do Tukachevsky's lowly voice. The Red Army centralizes all war critical industries under its guidance. The Red Army directly manages all railways under its control. The Red Army regulates all commerce from outside Russia. The Red Army commissions non-working classes into workers' roles when necessary. The Red Army forbids all workers' gatherings until the war's end. The Red Army distributes evenly our temporary meager stockpiles of food. The Red Army requisitions grain and livestock from farmers when necessary. The Red Army prohibits all capitalist activities within its borders. Non-compliance is punishable by death. The revolution continues its sacred war. Every sacrifice to the motherland, an inch each to victory. Ignorance is no excuse for disobedience. Uh, <coughs> so anyway. Uh, so, so like, let's say, yeah, Nidoking. King. Nidoking King is a super good Pokemon in Gen 1. You can, like, do speed runs with Nidoking. King. You can win the whole game with it. So if you do that in your first run, well, then now you're not allowed to use them anymore. So you got to be careful. Socialism is when the Red Army does stuff. Katyusha, yeah. If the Red Army does it, it's automatically right. And if it was wrong, it wasn't done by the Red Army. It's that simple, people. Okay, we barely have a lead. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are getting remade this year. Is Game Freak still making it? If it's still the same team behind, um, you know, Pokemon Sword and Shield, I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to get it. Um, now let's go, uh, uh, Pikachu and Eevee, I thought were fine, um, I'm probably a little bit influenced because I didn't pay the full price for them, I was able to get good sales on them, uh, I thought they were good, I thought they were very cool proof of concept, um, ideas, uh, so, it, but for me, it's like, you know, Ultra Sword and, uh, Ultra Sun and Moon was the end of the series, and then, uh, let's go Pikachu and Eevee were like, a epilogue. Well, I don't know. We'll see. The collapse of German Madagascar. Was this was this the German officer on leave and then they got the news? All right, who have we got here? We got the the Jews. Oh, they're angry. Uh Let's see. Are these doggy ears? <laughs> wow, this person's got a tan. Gabriel ran my. Oh, that's probably. These are the locals, isn't it? And then Emil Maurice. Oh, he's so checked out. <sighs> Maybe America will just come and pick me up. Alright, so now we're gonna start taking pain to our agriculture, but I think because we've already been improving it, we're sort of okay. What is this? This looks fun. So how do you think it will go this time around? Asked Borislav Dmitriev in the driver's seat. Beside him sat Vasily Pavlov, resting both his feet against the dashboard. 
Borislav's last ration cigarette hung from his lips as it infused secondhand smoke throughout the cabin. It's the fifth time we've done the song and dance this week, Boris. Kulaks always fold when they're at the front end of a barrel. Uh. Let's see here. Borislav peered ahead where Sarge and the rest of the confronted an old man on his homestead's front porch. He squinted and leaned over to the windshield. The old man seemed to edge a hand into one of his tattered robe's tears right on top of what looked like a bump. Almost as if the darger driver nudged his friend. Vasily, it is not like they have something to thre threaten us with now, do they? Command had us impound every gun west of the Urals a long time ago. If some Kulak thinks they could come at us with a rusted sickle... V Vasily, Vasily! So what could possibly go wrong? A bang, a distant thud, shouting, Vasily, you horse son! Can it's bleeding out? The bastard paid with both his grain and his life. <laughs> okay. And we're in negative stability again. Sure feels good. The army of the international proletariat. Uh, okay, do we want to use this infantry stuff here or... Yeah, 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 actually let's save it so we can... I was thinking about maybe clicking something early. No, no, this will be good. Get the improved infantry rifle. Look at this team down here. <laughs> Did he have two saws and one sniper? What happened to good old regular... There we go, there's a regular rifle. Hold on, is this... Hey, wait, this is the Girlzoon Panzer team! Oh, they couldn't afford a tank. They've just got their motorized. Wow, this is an enormous picture. Yeah, the gang's all here. <laughs> team Goosefish. That's great. Uh, okay. So I think Zukov is taking the lead again. Yep. Yasudo Crisis. Uh-oh. The men stood by the still, calmly, and waited their turn to jump. Oh, I'm always so happy when I timed that right. <laughs> Out with the crash. Oh, boy. That was what I really like that super event picture. So I'm probably only going to stream for like 10, 15 more minutes. Um, got other things to do today. But I will probably stream again tonight. Maybe not necessarily this, but we might do some near. Um, and besides that, yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. So um, also there's probably not going to be other pre-recorded stuff going up today. But there should be some stuff over the weekend. It's just things are a little... Things are a little bumpy these next couple days, but I'm just so happy that this mod is finally out. Uh, you know, we were able to get the... Oh, cool, we can prepare our raid. Uh, and, and, you know, just we, I was able to get that uh, unification Russian thing up. Please go check that out if you haven't already. I uh, would greatly appreciate it. Come on, Clara. Get in position. You know what's kind of funny? I think that Onega took the what we're about to raid from them from Paletsky. Pellets, which is run by Tukhachevsky right now. <sighs> okay. So anyway, yeah. 10, 15 more minutes. Um, but obviously, we're going to be playing more of this until we've done both paths. Uh, more land, land doctrine research? Yes, deep battle theory. The complete and thorough organization and thought behind every level of combat, from the individual tactics of the small army regiment to the complete operation spanning across continents, with several plans assigned to every front of the war in order to guarantee complete and overwhelming success. Da, as they say. All right, let's see. Watch, watch. Once again, now that it's Galata, it's gonna it's gonna change the general again, even though it didn't last time. Initiate the raid. Come on, they refuse tribute. Yep, just screw me, right? Just... Here we go. <laughs> the game is just screwing with me, I'm telling you. Cool, we can meet with the veterans again. That's like the best one. Oh, let's also purchase infantry equipment. Oh, but then I don't... I can't meet with the veterans. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, man. 
What does Yazov look like? Let's see. Uh, I don't know if Yazov's there yet. Oh, yeah, there you go. The raid was successful. See, seize all we could use. Uh-oh, uh-oh, a little bit of a lag. A little bit of a lag. There we go. Okay. Um, <coughs> does that give us two? Do we have two loot or just still one loot? Yeah, it's just one loot. Gosh, remember when I was saying I was trying to save political power? I ended up using it all anyway. I suppose well, that's how border conflict works in Hard 4. But last time it didn't. It didn't actually change. That's why I'm frustrated. It didn't change the generals. I had, um... Uh, who was it? Uh, freaking Yakubovsk in charge. But then it switched over. Okay. So, anyway, back to the, uh, the influence tracker. Um, tiny, tiny lead. I think we still should meet with the, the veterans. An ultimatum. Who? Onega? <laughs> Please. Or maybe it's only more on the defensive, but we will not back down so easily. And now my field marshal's in charge as the general. Son of a bitch. No horse of fire four months we need to it. Ubersold, you can rewind the tape and see what I was saying. It was it happened. Uh Enemy is defeated. Thanks for the rifles, suckers. Alright. Meet with the veterans, and I also wanted to do the not the war planning, um, securing control, or actually, let's scavenge for loot instead and shift the blame. Suslov's manipulation of party balance caused a great general collapse for us. What is this? Voroshilov's order. Uh, Tukhachevsky's proposal held merit. News that Tukhachevsky was pleased. Teaching some deep battle training to the newest recruits. Strategy perfected. Nice. Uh, I'd like to do the secure control, but, you know, there's only so much we can do at once. Wait, can we? Yes, we can finally hold the military parade. Nice. So this is going to increase our influence, but the thing I'm happier about is that it's going to help with our army professionalism even more. Great. So army professionalism, we're getting up to a whole four a month, you know, four monthly. It's still going to take us a long time to climb this mountain, but we'll get there. Yeah, now we're starting to really open up a lead. So we got shift the blame, one, two, three, four. Let's try to at least get to forward unto dawn, right? I think we could do that reasonably. Ugh. Oh, stretch. Here we go, the humanists versus Kemerov. Uh, I don't know. What do you think Kemerov's chances are? <laughs> Gumanith. A good gumanist is happy. Mm, let's go with, uh, yeah. Can't go wrong with some good old factory output. Oh! Oh, my hip just popped. There we go. <laughs> could appease Zukov. Why would we do that? We would never be friends. Uh, Poletsky and Comey are fighting. Come on, man! Magadan is now going after a more the fascist civil war has begun. Oh, yeah, the fascists versus the national socialists. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> but how's everybody liking the mod so far in the, in the, in the West Russian Revolutionary Front? Duvachevsky's Confession... 
Uh, conniving cunt, the bombs weren't German. Uh, so he's convincing people that the war, the West Russian war loss wasn't his fault, it was Suslov's. Uh, let's see. The man dons a broken spirit of a strong state, allowing himself to be caught in a state of camaraderie with liberalized reformers. We are the true successors for the Soviet Union. So we're basically saying Zukov's not the right path. He's a reformer. We don't need no reform. We just need to return to what was great. Okay, back to Clara. Hmm... Yeah, we got a healthy 10-point lead now. I don't think we have to meet with veterans and stuff anymore. Uh, shall we build new schools? Or, hold on, what are we not working on right now? Uh, we do agriculture, workers, industry, I don't know. Um, ah, you know, whatever, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Actually, maybe I should have done industry. Dun, 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 dun. You know what? Yeah, I think that's a good goal. Let's let's try to get to forward onto Dawn. It's good stuff. Let's drink my tea, that's what the slurping is. <laughs> Kaya has been elected the Prime Minister of Japan. An economist touch, perhaps. Uh I don't know. It looks like Amur is kind of slicing in pretty pretty well. Amur is supposed to be one of the harder ones, I always hear. Uh one of the hardest like unification paths. Phenom Kitkachkarn. But I suppose we need to be focusing on the people here in uh, West Russia. We've got Rommel here and the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> Aryan schematics, lymphatics, dope Steady as she goes. Uh, the Transbaikal Principality is declared war on Amor. Yep, they got that two-front war they always got to worry about. So that's kind of screwing them right now. Industrial investments, shall we? Or, hmm. I think securing control actually is probably more important right now. Get that stability. And I don't care about focusing on research right now. Let's do, no, you know what? Yeah, industrial investments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More factories. It's a good thing. Basic training is turned into combat schooling. A lot of that stuff is good. Army professionalism change. Yes, ready for victory. The Aryan bra. Is Kennedy over here yet? No, it's still Nixon. It's gonna be soon though. The changeover, very soon. Okay. Zukov's still making moves, but we still got a good lead. Seven and a half points. He's not going to catch us in time. Oh, wow. Are we going to actually see a Jewish Madagascar? Very rare event. So, the Siberian Black Army and the People's Revolutionary Council are at war with one another. Kamarov is just not letting them through. I guess it is, you know, they're holding at their capital. Huh. Majority Russian, huh? I just realized some of our, yeah, the majority of our culture up here is Komi. There's Komi, and then that's Russian, and that's Russian, but... Yeah, this sub area up here, Narayan Mar, is Comey. Hey, I like to see that stat. I just realized we've got more likes than we have active viewers right now. That that means that some people still hit the like button on their way out or something. That's very nice of them. Thank you. 
Um, let's let us do the the no, it's not the civilian construction. Let us do the <sighs> land doctrine. Four hundred units of West Russian infantry equipment and hundred. Yeah, we got infantry equipment, support, towed artillery, all that good stuff. Fantastic. Zukov still making moves. We're losing our lead. We're only about four and a half right now. But the heroic 46 years is going to be good. Oh, it looks like uh, looks like negotiations have concluded. It's a three-way fight now between Amur, Cheetah, and Magadan. Who's going to get it? By the way, uh, if any of you have seen my Russian uh, playlist, uh, the uh, in my playlist, my Russian unification video that I posted, the Verona Conference ends, mm, pizza, uh, then I do have a playlist both in the description and in the pinned comment of the playlist of all the music that the super events are in there. So if you want to go into that playlist, you can find all the videos that were used. Um, just if you're into that sort of thing. You know what? I'll even uh, I'll even just post it here. Let's copy the link address. Yeah. So that's the that's the playlist. Now it's not in order. I'll eventually fix it, but it's not a priority right now. Um, not at all. Okay. Any any other portraits anybody want me to see? Um. Uh. Yeah. Look at Amor. Oh, that's it. Amor's dead. Yeah. We just saw it happen. Ignited by a tragedy, the fascists of Russia, Russia ignited in a farce. We can do Operation Snow Maiden now to do the border war, but I don't think we need to. I think we've got this totally under control. Well, actually, let's see what happens after Zukov makes the move. Riveting content, fine chap. Well, you know, it's a little slow right now. That's how it goes. Tomsk just can't seem to finish off Kemerov. Come on, Dmitri, my friend. Figure it out. Yeah, there goes Tanya the Evil. Um, 22 days on that, and then this is going to give me a large boost. Still got a point and a half lead. Boy, Zukov's just relentless. Nona's right on my ass, coming at me like a blizzard. There goes the military state of Madagascar. So, it's just a two-person race down here. I don't know if the Hitchnagutu movement is going to be able to pull this off. We could do Operation Snow Maiden, but it chews up. You know, fair amount. I'd rather not. There we go. Kemerov is done. So much for that weird monarchy. Can I show Vlasov? Where's that one again? I still don't have like every single one memorized. Oh, nice for the tank, Gorky. The tank factory with a state. Here's what we'll do. We'll meet with the veterans one more time just to really, really lock it down. Yeah. I think we're good now. Heroic 46 years. What is that reference to? 46 years ago, the spirit of revolution was born within the soul of the Russian nation. Ah, okay. Samara? Oh, okay. Hold on. This is Leosov. Those glasses make her look really tired. A party for the party. For the first and last time, this is how Man of the October Revolution handles his vodka. Half a liter of spirit disappeared into his gullet in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, man. You know why I should be in charge here? Watch this and chug vodka. <laughs> Forward unto dawn. For the first time in years, dawn shines over Russia and the skies are quiet, silent, no more alarms, no more bombs. The planes that strafe over the scattered remnants of the old Union in vain hope that they can defeat the united will of a people determined to survive have not come for a few weeks. 
So Hitler's about to die. Yeah, that that's what that's referencing. And then the bombing will finally stop and we'd actually have something that resembles an industry with a concept. Got to get our tanks. Oh, the Ser the 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 Serbian Black Army is about to be in some trouble there. Uh, Anti-fascist divisions, I like that. <laughs> um, we need the other thing. There we go. So to do this, we're short what twenty-five main battle tanks. Well, we gotta start. 400 on. Does it start a war? Not that I'm aware of. I guess we'll find out in a minute. But we can prepare another raid, though. Raids are always good. <sighs> um, let's come over here. Prepare the raid. Right, Clara, you ready? Ready to get switched? You know what? Let's get. Let's go with somebody else and see if it'll switch over to Clara. Let's see, Chuikov. Try to pull a sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, you know, the Serbian Black Army here in central Serbia. Yeah. Dude, you don't need to repeat the things I say. Who's in charge here in Kran... Krasnoyarsk? Wow. That is a vicious looking woman. Woman, you need love. Yeah, we don't have to do Snow Maiden. We got this. You'll have confident, maybe even playable opera. Yeah, I remember you bringing that up. Uh, yeah, opera could be interesting. Show Afghanistan. There you go. I think this is supposed to be slightly based on that famous picture of the Afghan girl. The one from National Geographic. Alright, let's initiate the raid. And also scavenge for loot while we're at it. So then, uh, once the raid is done, we can, um, do the, uh, do the thing. What's going on? Are we initiating the raid or what? Tribute got paid. Oh, suck it, brah. And Onega doesn't want none. They're getting sick of me beating them up constantly. <laughs> Adolf Hitler is dead. Tragedy has consumed Germany as the news first spread throughout the Reich and then the world. <laughs> Good. Good. Alright. So, everybody do the crab dance in the chat. Um, and then uh, we're gonna keep moving. Artillery, king of the battle, but also the tank stuff. Uh, that figure was a bit petite. Um, so, we're about to be done here. Okay, forward unto dawn. We can now do some more investing. Warlord development stuff. And I think the way we want to go is... Um, I don't think we necessarily need the infrastructure... Hmm, political campaign. You know, I think some of these things can wait. Uh, okay. In 22 days, we'll be able to take another one of these, though. Hold on, what? Shouldn't... Nothing's happening. Okay, now I'm a little nervous. Let's come over here. Just in case Zukov tries to pull some crap. The end of the Iron Storm, so... National... Yeah, the bombings have ended. So now... Takes a minute, I think. There we go. Just, everybody's changing over. Just you wait. Just you... I'm not very familiar with how Tomsk works right now. Um, Darkseid 1000, so I can't say. Uh, 
There it is. The German Civil War breaks out. The end of the Reich, surely. It is thus necessary that the individual should finally come to realize that his own ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of the nation. So it begins. Yes! Kill each other, Germans. Yes, yes. Good. Good. All right, so place your bets. Who you got? Heydrich, Bormann, Spear, or Gooding? Let us not forget that Heydrich is the officially chosen successor. Yeah. Gang's all here. Hmm. We're going to get that tungsten. And Odenstadt Burgund is going after France. Let's see if they can beat my speed run record. It's October 29th. Come on. How fast can you capitulate him? I think I did it in like 12 days. Or was it less? The Franco-Burgundian War has begun. A shadow looms over France. Who is this? This is Onega? Oh, oh, I don't think so, Onega. I do not think so. All right, let's get over there. Come on, 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 come on. Oh, we could have missed in some other stuff. Ooh, oh, I'm kind of lagging. Hmm. Let's see here. Warlord Lord development, I think we want to do... Not the stability. Maybe nothing. Yeah, let's just hold on to that political power for now. Anyway, come on. Get in position, get in position, get in position. Chaos in Ostland. I'm loving these new event pictures. It's great. The bombings have stopped. Clear skies, dark clouds. There's Moscow turmoil. Yeah, everything's kicking off at once. All around the world. The Reich's frontier can no longer hold. All right. Time to bring an end to the bombings. So we bypass that, and then... We should first, hmm, let's reestablish farming without having to worry about the bombs. Um, I'll close these. Nine more days. Hans Spiedel has assumed control of Germania, and look who it is. Oh no, I thought it was somebody else. Never mind. I thought it was the big sister from Girls und Panzer. Hmm. The English stuff has begun. Himmler's England uh, has risen. Nice Union Jack right there. Okay. Expansion into Africa has begun. Poland is now independent. They're gonna make a run for. It. They're gonna make a run of it. We got Anarchy, Moscowin, yeah, Glasgow. It's all falling apart pretty fast. Six more days. The Warsaw Uprising. Okay, are we in position to deal with operate? Uh, yeah. We will not back down so easily, Onega. There goes the English Civil War. The most uncivil of wars. We gotta see anime Gorbachev. Well, I'm not in charge of making him spawn, so we'll have to kind of wait and see. The formation of the African shield. Look at this short person. Faud, okay, can we see Sablin? It's Sablin's been dead. <laughs> it, it's too late for that. You'll have to go watch my video, my Russian unification one. Okay, we're gonna win this fight, and okay, we're about to get our extra loot. Serbs are rising up. Okay, uh, industry equipment, yeah. Okay, it's two front war here now. We've got Pokrishkin try to take on Tomsk. Two front war might help it a little. Can't believe how strongly the Siberian Black Army is holding on, though. 
All right, but I think that's what we're going to call it for the day. Or no, yeah, let's finish the tribute thing. Uh, so, yeah, this ended up taking longer than I thought because I was trying to get through the, 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 the Shining Dawn thing. Uh, but we made lots and lots of progress. So, oh, there's Muscovy. Bronislav Kaminsky. So next episode, we're going to definitely get into some actual proper words. There's the South African War. Yeah. So once Hitler dies, everything just goes to shit. Uh, okay. Fout. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I not playing enough for you when we're almost three hours into a stream? Are you going to be upset if I stopped it now instead of five minutes from now? I'm gonna do it, you know, don't worry, but it's like, come on, man, have some, have some perspective. There it is! Terrific. I think this is supposed to be Megumin. Yeah. I see the better do 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 Alright, uncover the industry, get ourselves a new civilian factory. Oh boy, we're having a little trouble here. It's making me slightly worried. Want. The enemy is defeated. Thanks for the political power, suckers. Um, industrial investment time? Or do I want to just hold on to it? Napalm sticks to Nazis. <laughs> All right, but th that's it. That's it for today. I am Conquering History Games. Thank you very, very much for joining me. And I will see you all in the next episode in which we are going to uh, finish up this tiny tree, and then the next one is going to presumably be when uh, Tukhachevsky formally takes charge, and then we're going to go after uh, the rest of Western Russia. I'll see you next time. Please drop a like on your way out if you don't mind, and if you haven't already, I encourage you all to check out the Russian Unifications Super Event compilation that went up this morning. It's really cool. Different pictures, different music. Um, a lot of work went into it, and thank you to the modding team for doing that. See you next time.